you flick that once. All right. Now, remember, you're all you're all a big part of the show. So the better you are, the better Larry is. Okay, now you see this gentleman? Yeah, he's giving me this uh, this sign, and it says we're on in ten seconds. So get ready to have a good time. All right, here we go. This is exciting, isn't it? In five, four, three, two. Who's ready? Who's ready? Thank you for coming out. It's Easy Paradise Open Mic Monday, everybody. It's a year and a half of precious memories we make. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Give yourselves a huge round of applause for coming out. Play St. Patrick's Day. I know you're all hungover. You're noticing that. So I really appreciate that. <laughs> The one person show here. I do the sound, I take all the pictures, I run the video, I'm the host uh, of Easy Paradise Open Mic. Uh, the government hasn't banned us yet, okay? They're trying to ban Easy Paradise, they're trying to force us to sell, and we say no! We are not going to give your data away to Steve Mnuchin and Mitch McConnell and all the crooks and the Supreme Court and this bullshit government, okay? This mic belongs to you, it belongs to the people, okay? You are the open mic, the, the beautiful, the John Kings of the world, the amazing superstars and entertainers of New York City. Give yourselves a big round of applause. We love you. You're beautiful. We have to kind of keep it down a little bit because they're doing their yearly uh, com competition open mic poetry at uh, the legendary KGB Monday Night Series. I think that's barbaric. I think scoring poetry is... Fucked up, frankly. It's not competitive. We're here to support each other tonight, and I can't wait to see. We got Sing Ya in the house. It's a special year and a half, one of our legends. We have so many great acts. It has been a year and a half. We've done, this is it. This is this is 18 months of, uh, I guess it's not really anything that's like, if you're in a relationship, maybe that means something, but <laughs> an open mic time's not really a big deal. But we have, uh, I just got back from Montauk, so I'm Long Island coded right now, everybody. I'm going to read some of my... So my travel poetry for you to get things kicked off. I'm gonna do a little sprech time because it's spring. We it was warm apparently here. We missed that. We missed all that. We we picked the wrong time to travel. We went to to the cold. It's the easternmost tip of Long Island. So it was. It, have you seen Eternal Sunshine in the Spotless Mind? Woo. Anybody? <laughs> it was filmed there. So it's uh it's brought back a lot of memories for me. A lot of tenderness. A lot of uh, Indy Slee's era. So I'm going to do some stretch time, everybody, to start things off, to just get, the, to get, the, get things warmed up here. I know we're all tired from that beautiful uh, spring break. It's spring break. For, is it spring break for everybody? I mean, that's why I went to Montauk. I wanted an anti-vacation. I wanted a negativity vacation. You know, I love, there's nothing more poetic than a beach town in the off-season. It's the greatest writer's residency, everybody. Poets, I know you're poets. And the beach in winter, I mean, what's more melancholy and magical realism than that? And, uh, and uh, Montauk is the town that Jaws was based on, actually. So, uh, you know, we were sharking. We were talking about sharking. Quinn, Quinn was there, you know, the guy that uh, that character is based on. So, so we had an Irish cab driver. And uh, on St. Patrick's Day, we didn't mean to do that. I had corned beef and cabbage. It's a tradition in my family. And so uh, it was delicious. We went to this place called Shag Wong, where the Rolling Stones used to play pool back in the 70s with Yon Werner. All right, so I'm gonna read my travel diary I wrote extensively while I was out there of my travels in the Hamptons. So this is March 16th.
We took the Hampton subway to Stranger Things. Who CIA op industry plant Andy Warhol did mind control experiments on milk carton children under the radar at Camp Hero where that expression comes from. Algonquin for beach. Which one are you? Loon, scoter, pigeon, on the seal hall trail. On the seal hall trail. Joel, everybody. <laughs> the piano man on the Seal Hall trail to the observation kiosk, ruddy face, afoot and lighthearted, taking to Palmonic shores, the graveyard of ships, getting storm chasers for big waves when there's hurricanes in the tropics, picked up Nightwood at the Friends of the Library book sale, left one year on the donation rack, everything should be, every, 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 everything should be pay what you want, everything. Pink taco taxi, fresh seafood, fresh seafood, fresh seafood, fresh seafood. From the Dream Warrior, where they unalived the Boeing whistleblower while he was in Charleston to testify. Mnuchin wants to buy TikTok. The U.S. is only 10% of their global audience. Nautical peacoat sushi and sashimi. Do you know who the fuck you're talking to? Siesta Key. We bought there 30 years ago. Love it. Aotheon at first light. Aotheon at first light. Tudor revival fra davolo. Corned beef and cabbage at Shagwong, St. Patrick's Day. I was wrong about gorillas when Eric Eichholt wanted to cover Feel Good Inc. I was wrong about anything people liked that I doubted. There's no island left for islanders like me. <laughs> You got it. You understand. You get the you get the references. Canceled St. John's game mid-play. COVID put us in a funk we haven't got out of yet. Eight pan-seared scallops on a bed of spinach and sweet potatoes. The set is the bar by the busy elevator. A repeat of last night. Forty dollars on caps to get there. A back swordfish skishing world capital real casting commissioned by George Washington. Ashley's at all my shows. House of Bands. House of Bands. House of Bands. Red Bull Academy. Red Bull Academy. Red Bull Academy. I'm on the fucking half pipe at the House of Bands. Reading my poetry. Winning the fucking poetry contest at the Red Bull Academy. I've got a PhD from the Red Bull Academy. <laughs> Sturgeon, flounder, trouncing, and running, cartwheeling in Atlantic Sea Spray. Kevin James. Kevin James, Paul Blart, Mall Cop. Kevin James, Paul Blart, Mall Cop, Part 2, the sequel. Omnipresent in syndication, his face, personality, and body type are layered over the male gender presentation. Fried pickles dipped in ranch, Zeppeli's forte, Irish cab driver sharing automatic side door minivan, Californication, Julian Schnabel open air studio, lost on the dunes, it's like the west coast, but the opposite. <laughs> Everybody, come on, it's one year and a half. It's the Austin 316. Uh, one year and a half. And that's the bottom line. Because Stone Cold said so, everybody. Okay, we're celebrating Stone Cold also tonight. He's a working class hero. We love Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's Stone Cold stuttered Donald Trump, everybody. He fights the corporate overlords. 
and we're going to get things started with one of our favorites. It's a two drink minimum, it's a five minute time limit per performer. We have amazing poets, we have amazing comedians, we have amazing musicians. And I know that was bullshit. You're going to do great. We're not selling out tonight. We are heroes tonight in New York. We're keeping the culture alive. And this guy's one of my favorites. He's one of the best. He's a true New Yorker. We're going to kick things off. He just keeps getting better. It's insane how talented this guy is. He's a great poet, actually. If you listen closely to the lyrics, it's all there. And he loves hot moms. So can we give it up for Angel Lugo, everybody? Up with this one, and then as soon as it's done, you can just go on to the second. You know the vibe is cool. It's new. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> first time headlining Easy Paradise. How are we doing tonight? Woo! I know it's Monday, I know I'm first, I know everyone's tired, but come on, how are we doing? <laughs> some of you know me, some of you don't. I'm Angel Lugo. Brooklyn native. I'm here to give you that life changer shit. You know how it goes. <laughs> um, today I was on the train. I just want to open up with this. I had to share it. Just random shit. I'm on the train. I'm coming home, right? Now it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Random homeless guy walks up to me. Empty Red Bull can bottle and a cross. He comes up to me and says, Brother, you want this? And he hands me the cross. I said, Nah, man, I'm good. He stood there for a second. He goes, you sure you don't want it? I'm like, whoa, what? Is like, you know something I know? All right, regardless, um, I just had to share it. This was this, this like, old lady across from me. She was like, oh, but I see it Oh my God, oh, yeah, I know where. Uh, I got any Spanish people in the crowd. God bless my yo también. Hey. Woo! Okay, all right. You can hit the first track, Matt. I don't want to keep him waiting too long. I know where. This is brand new shit. Woo! I need to work cause the Brooklyn A's about to light your life up yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care about my feelings I don't care about my feelings cause my focus on the money I'm Cold cracking, no slack, and moving like a mop And I'm overcoming on even nods like a mountain climber Lurks saw his wishes as a pulmonary edema What a racist man, baby, I just want a gene again That is just a common man, I ain't throwing shots Look at this and not the man, devil says I'm not Chatting with the priest while he's praying to the Buddha He says ain't it really funny that you're fucking with your dude again Father, how you know that? The motherfucker on Instagram, BK Native, and my jacket's in the back, and I got flyers, but I forgot the flyer. My voice a little shot. All right, um, I gotta close out and thank you for the fucking round of applause. You guys are so awesome. I made this life changing shift for y'all. It'll start here with dreaming bigger, dreaming large, dreaming with uneven odds. You know how it goes. So, I got a first time rapper to come to the mic. Um, 
This man has supported me since day one, man. I gotta get a round of applause for him. Can I get Isaac up to the stage, Miss Stiley? Woo! He made this song back in 2022 when the both of us were still trying to figure out what the fuck music and sound even was, so. <laughs> Cheese and crackers. It, it was like, <laughs> like literally an hour and a half train ride to the Bronx to record for six hours and just experiment. So, go ahead, my brother. What's good, everybody? Um, it's my first time performing. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> this dude's gonna give me that life changer shit. I swear to God, everybody who hears it always says this is the one. You can find it on Apple Music. You can find it on the Instagram. Come holla at him, motherfucker. Thank you for being it. Matt, let's kick it off. This one is. It's been in the vault too long. Shout out to a brother named Wyatt for doing this sample on my makeshift mixtape. <laughs> Each equally as deadly. The question is still remaining. What will happen to the vigilante? Better cry, Isaac. Better cry. You gotta get out and tell him what he cried. Woo! Woo! Don't know what I need, baby. Maybe it's your oxygen. What's with like an IJ? You restore my confidence. I'm not like these other guys. Camping on my promises. Can never get over you and need us. All this love will come with pain Don't mess with no average joke It's problematical Don't say my name, you're magical Act like talking war with me You're planning to some tactical Always knew who I could be No need for no theatricals I could love you with no sound Hard and so classical Sit about and speak around All those thoughts inside of you You should know what I'm about Everything that I'ma do When the fire is in my I love you like a victim freeze Fuck the boss won't do it twice Plain as mine and she agrees Silver lining on my line and I'm high My pen and paper I need a time And now I'm shining Shouldn't wait for later More than a dime like like a fire Fuck all the haters Don't know what I need baby Maybe it's your oxygen Once we're locking eyes Yeah you restore my confidence I'm not like these other guys Camping on my promises Can never get over you And need us some counseling Yeah We sing it in the rain Even all this love will come with pain Don't mess with no average jokes Stop telling people that it's not that deep Cause these are my feelings and not yours I'm going through a war in my head Just to ease my pain Popping all these perks and sipping on this red I overthink, I overlove, I overcare But once I'm over it, it's over with, yeah uh, Come on, cry Yo, this is for the Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, find me on Instagram, PK Nate. You can find him, Loki Smooth. We'll be on the story. We make it for you. Thank you so much. We'll be back here next week. Holla at him, motherfucker. You guys keep being awesome. We'll keep bringing it. Appreciate it. Give it up for the PK Native Angel Luco, everybody. Fantastic. He's doing great stuff. He is really bringing a lot of amazing artists. He's doing great recordings. Check out his recordings online. He's really giving up one more time for the BK Nava Angel Lugo. Now, amazing. The lyrics, the beats, it's, it's incredible. He just keeps getting better. Okay. Is Vanessa Frias in the house? Vanessa Frias. Are you out there? All right. Maybe later. One of our favorites here, one of the best poets. I, honestly, everybody, we're very lucky. I, I think she's got one of her books. Ladies and gentlemen, can we give her a big round of applause for Galvin, one of the best poets, best poets in New York City, everybody. Give it up for Stoke Galvin. Thanks, buddy. 
I have never gotten to go on this early. Woo! <laughs> and I am doing the Palace Reading Series on April 16th. Woo! Uh, you know what the Palace is? It's like right on the edge of my Goldberg Park. You guys should come. It's a great reading series, everyone. Woo. So right now I'm just kind of trying to like figure out. I, I'm experimenting about my set, what that's going to be. And you get to ask me to be the first to hear it. And we're going to hear some totally new stuff by then. So here I go. <clears throat> this one's called, A woman at the supermarket runs to the register waving a ham and yells, I remember! <laughs> <laughs> and I think of my own funeral. How I've always had a vague sense of the way I'd like to be remembered, but I've never actually seen someone remember that way until this moment. <laughs> This one is called, Angels Can't Clean Themselves. <laughs> they say every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. But the truth is, every time a bell rings, a child has a nightmare about a horse exploding. <laughs> angels know this, but see no reason to disclose something so disturbing about bells. Once, when I saw an angel, as a sea salt and vinegar potato chip. <laughs> I asked it if it had appeared to tell me Christianity is the one true faith. It explained the chip's resemblance to how I believe an angel looks was a coincidence. And angels clean themselves by being digested. Food is the form angels take when they're dirty. <laughs> Woo! Uh, this one is called <laughs> Have a Time. There should be a funeral home that takes all the corpses out in a van to show them a good time. <laughs> Sad people would follow the van in hopes of learning what a good time is. Finally confirming that all anyone really enjoys is the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> uh, this is called On Brand. Chrysanthemum, ball peen, minaret, plover, candelabra, Neutrogena. I am listing words to exalt language. And because it's trendy to imply depth of emotion without admitting any of its embarrassing particulars. To suggest I engage in human relationships, but never to an extent that affects my brand. <laughs> when someone cheats on me, I post a wordless wash of colors on social media. Umber. Linguini, <laughs> petrichor, is a sad thing to say when you actually love art so much you once fucked a swan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one is called Count Chocula. Your mom wouldn't let you have Count Chocula when you were a kid, and now you're an alcoholic. <laughs> so far, this is what you have observed about the, the passage of time. Though you met someone whose mom is Count Chocula, and they're also an alcoholic. You've met people who aren't addicted to anything, and you don't know whether they've stopped existing or never started. You see them laughing on patios, and all you know is you want their beers. <laughs> this is called Two English Speaking People. A mysterious old woman leads you into a cemetery. After an hour of walking around through the dark, in silence, you sit down by a stream of black water and she opens two beers. This always happens to you. She has no wisdom to impart. She was just looking for a drinking buddy. The conversation turns to why people have names. Neither of you can think of a reason. 
I only talk poorly about UD face. Here's a couple of new ones. To your face and typically through a microphone. Inanimate objects get married. <laughs> There's a church where inanimate objects go to marry each other. The sacrament isn't God's blood or symbolic wine. Just regular blood from people. Because objects don't believe in God. They just really like drinking blood. <laughs> There's the last one. Entrepreneur. There are signs in every business describing what to do if someone is choking. But not one describing how to tell if someone wants to be choked. <laughs> This is why I haven't found my business. <laughs> because whatever it is, such a sign would be prominently displayed. I know I have a business somewhere because I'm so obviously successful. Thank you. Get Ugly Time by Galvin. It's available at The Strand and all your finer bookstores. Give it up one more time for the great poet Galvin. And check out the Palace Reading Series. Uh, oh, it's, uh, it's gonna be April 16th at The Palace is the, the edition of the Palace Reading Series that I will be reading at. But it's just a great reading series. Just check out The Palace. It's great. Just go whenever you can. Right. Thanks for that tip. Give it up for Gal. And check out the Palace reading series. A great point. All right. We're keeping it rolling. We have so many amazing acts. We have Phil on deck. Luke Bessett coming up after that. This next act, we are so stoked about. He's one of the premier uh, uh, comic. Uh, I'm not even sure how to describe. It. Let's just get. Let's get Jaime Wilhelm up. One of our one of our favorites. Willie Zabar could not make it. We have Jaime Wilhelm. Everybody, give it up for. Jaime Wilhelm. Before I begin, can I pay someone a dollar to film my set, please? One dollar? <laughs> so, it's already rolling, don't touch it. Woo! Up now, half there. <laughs> Tape it together, it's still legal tender. Anyway, so I'm Jaime Wilhelm. A little about myself. Uh, I'm a proud German Jewish fascist, and I'm going to play. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> La laugh at my truth. And I'm gonna play some music at you today. I'm gonna make up some brand new songs no one's ever heard, no one will ever hear again. Don't tell anyone about it. Woo! What's our first topic, people? <laughs> Anything in the world? <laughs> Montauk! <laughs> I've been there Not to gloat I arrived by U-boat, yeah, I'm a veteran, thank you, fought in the war of 1914 against those French, <laughs> they were so mean, gotta ask you a question, why don't we call it the war of Belgian aggression, <laughs> what's the topic, anybody? St. Patrick's Day, someone gave me a topic, alas, but St. Patty's Day is in the past, you fucked it, you had just one chance, you stumbled and stepped on my toe, and an otherwise wonderful dance, what's another topic? Snow Day Car Crash. Say it again. Romantic Car Crash. We can work with that. <laughs> two, one, two, three. I'm a Subaru. How about you? I'm feeling kind of bored. I'd like to drive into your Ford. Oh, the intersection. <laughs> of 86 and Lex I'm looking for a little collision Automobile sex Oh, eject me, no seat belts Oh, I like it with no protection Get launched from the car But I'll land on my erection Hey, so 
magic clap back. When we're at five minutes, I need you to physically touch me because I'm not paying attention to anything visual. Next topic, please. John Monet Ramsey. No. It's already done. There's nothing left to say about her. She's gone, bro. It's a tragedy. Uh, did you do it? Yes. You guys are too young to know what we're talking about. Next topic. Why would I hate an egg dish? <laughs> it sounds like a problem with you, but I'll still fulfill your wish. Oh, scrambled eggs can get fucked. <laughs> because they don't have integrity. Deviled eggs are satanic. Cause a Christian moral panic. You freak a fuck out of here with the devil egg. Powdered egg, no. Egg from a garden, no. Name an egg. See, you're not crazy. Soft <laughs> oil. No. See? Uh, next topic. A positive take on Al Qaeda. Uh, someone arrest this man. Please. I'm a fascist, but I'm not a monster. <laughs> this guy's a big fan of Osama. Maybe he is edgy, or maybe he's a bomber. Oh, I hope not. There's a take I hope you get that KG Bobby Bobby Bar is a low value target. <laughs> it would be just so politically confusing if someone exploded this place that I'm pretty sure no one ever will. All right, one more to round us out. One more to make me a little more round. <laughs> Stop fucking laughing, dude. It's music. Next topic. Bad sushi restaurant. Why is everyone so negative about food? <laughs> I didn't say I needed a different one. I didn't say I needed a different one. I didn't say it was bad. But I do want to hear what that was. Is it? Erectile dysfunction and pirates. <laughs> Yarr! Can't swap your poop deck. And invented by Agra, I can nay get erect. Oh, I'm a pirate. I'm always feeling really soft. Come check me out on Thursday night at the Pit Loft. <laughs> it's not part of that song, but it's true. Oh, David Crockett. David Crockett's locket? At the bottom of this. Shut up. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it for you. I was trying. And I succeeded. I succeeded. I did actually really well tonight. My name is Woo! Andy Villa. Uh, thank you for your time. Woo! You're welcome for my time. Yeah. Check out the great Jaime Wilhelm at the Pit Loft doing his uh, Jewish fascist uh, improvised comedy piano. Give it up one more time. We love it. It's getting the blood moving. Coming up with ideas on stage. We love it. We love it. We love it. That was an original piece that you did just for us. That was amazing. Give it up one more time for Jaime Wilhelm. All right, we have Luke Bessett on deck. We have John Waters coming up after that. Can we get Phil up? Woo! Give it up for Phil. I am tagging the performers in the Easy Paradise stories. If you want to check anybody out, I'm tagging them in the story. All right, I think I may be the first performer that is not musically inclined, so bear with me. <laughs> Cheers here, I like it. Happy Monday, everyone. <laughs> Most of you passed the vibe check. For those of you that cheer, I was being facetious. <laughs> I don't celebrate. I don't observe Happy Mondays. That was a trick. But I appreciate your participation. Um, when people tell me Happy Monday at work, that's one of my pet peeves. Um, I just look at them and smile politely. <laughs> I have a lot of pet peeves. Um, we have quite the musical group here, a lot of different talents. Uh, by spontaneous noise, how many people are musicians in the room? Mostly musicians. How many people are poets? 
reading of the word. And we have a couple of readers in the audience tonight. I'm going to keep her just reading words. Yeah. Woo! Two. There we go. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, well, I do comedy or podcast, depending on how much you all laugh. <laughs> So tonight doesn't go well. This was a five-minute podcast. Um, Lugo, this light's kind of bright, but Lugo and the Smooth Guy. Y'all did a great job if you're still out there. Love the emotion. Uh, one of my pet peeves is someone that does comedy is when people tell me jokes. Uh, but I'm actually going to break one of my own rules. And I have a song topic for you, for any rappers in the crowd that want a topic, want to be a little bit different, want to be edgy. I want to hear a song in rotation about Android phones. Oh. Oh. What, what was that reaction? <laughs> <laughs> you work for Apple or? <laughs> what was the reaction? This is crowd participation. You can, you can, you can talk about it. Androids are fun. <laughs> but. The green no, text. You're fun. That's why I was like, oh wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, I like it. Cool. So. The sky's the limit when it comes to rapping about androids. You can be different, you can be fun, with sort of that undertone. Um, you have a global influence. You can be an outcast. And think about how confident you have to be to have an android. You're going against the grain. You got the green bubble. You don't even have to tell people what type of time you're on because you're all about that green, right? Right? <laughs> so speaking of green, yesterday was St. Patty's Day. I think most people in here are hungover. I don't know if anyone's told New Yorkers, but we use legal in New York now. Like you all are allowed to smoke. But everywhere we go, still two drink minimum, no two blunt minimums, no two joint minimums. <laughs> you have to switch it up a bit. You all missed a prime opportunity yesterday with St. Patty's Day. 420 is a month away. Let me plant some seeds so that you all can get it right. <laughs> Huge opportunity for you all to cash out. It's legal. I'll leave you off one more thought. So I just moved up here from Miami. Before Miami, I lived in San Francisco. And the common theme that I found between San Francisco and New York is the poop on the streets. <laughs> so San Francisco, sort of mystery, different shapes and sizes, very diverse. New York, different sized dogs. <laughs> Which leads me to believe that many of the dogs here have never pooped in an actual yard. I dog sit at my dog in law, and I tried to take it to Central Park, and he just refused to do the do. Um, so I don't have a punchline yet, but I'll think of one. I was just hoping one would come to me on stage, but it would have been great. I appreciate you all bearing with me. My first time back on stage since uh, the pandemic. for Phil, first time back on stage since the pandemic, everybody. I mean, that, oh yeah. Get, get, it's just this time, I mean, they kept us it, it, like inside our houses for a year. This is, we have to get out and do open mics just to get back that time that they took. All right, so we have, give it up one more time for Phil. That was fantastic. All right, we have John Waters on deck. We have Anna Philbert coming after that. Craig Greenberg, Cannon, that Mohammed Patel, and more. Can we get Luke Bessett up to do some poetry for us? Give it up for Luke Bessett, going to read for us. Hi, my name is Luke. Um, happy Mother. Uh, I've, I've never shared my poetry before on the stage, so this is the first time I'm going to see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I have, I have just a few, a few things, and I realized for the first time a couple days ago what, um, what my poetry, when I, when I like it, like what it's supposed to be and what it's about, and it's usually about moments um, that I share with someone else or where their reality and my reality kind of creates something where I feel. Not grounded, but I have an understanding of what's happening. And it usually comes through a lot of confusion and bullshit. So, I'm gonna read a couple things about that. This one is um, about an ex-lover in Berlin, so let's... Here you go. 
Um, <clears throat> I ask again, please, sandwich me between your worlds of reality. As you bless me with your gift of your flawed understanding, perfected for my many dispositions and blunted hemorrhages. You bless me a second time while you let me drift into the night, an ever curious bat who jumps between trees back under your wing and after many well wishes on many nights and many unspoken curses of frustration and mindless mimicry that we both accept as truth as not to burst the bubble of the evening dew. In these tales I recall the many nights I spent with you. You love and lust for many things not spoken of but merely pollinated with a laugh and an unsynchronized blink of your eyes. Thank you. Um, this is a poem. Um, when I was younger, when I was like in kindergarten, I, I had massive anger issues. I, I, I did punch the kid a few times. Um, and now we're trying. And now we're trying to get that out in poetry and words, and you know, not be an ailment to society. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is about someone that fucked me over in a business deal. It was nice. Um, and with my blunted and uneven jaw, I curse you. I curse you with the gift of awareness. Learn through lessons you do not yet see. May your bones and tendons twist and squeeze from stress. Metal beams that allow you a temple erected to yourself false in all ways, misuse of beautiful power of selfishness, fall. Let your self-inflicted wounds fester and fester, rusting and rotting the base of your tower, tower you have unrighteously impregnated onto otherwise sacred soil. During this process, you may start anew. With this gift I give to you, may you not misuse the gift Gifts life gives you, for now you understand what becomes of the hatred you spew. The hardships you cause others with your neglect for your own soul as well as others. May you learn from your decisions in this life or the following with hate. Luke. <laughs> uh, and then, I think I have time for one or two more. Uh, I don't know what this one is about, but I like it. Um, I should remember you, but my mind is currently gorging. It gorges, gorge, gorgeous, gorgeous earth, gorgeous sky, gorgeous soul, so let me gorge. Attracted to my eyes that you see, my eyes see the clouds, my skin that you touch, that touches the soil. You'd like to be part of what my body sees and touches. You'd like me to remember you. I'll show you that you're gorgeous too, that I'll gorge on you. Gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chess. Give it up for Luke Besson, everybody. Check, uh, check out. Do you have a social media, poetry, or? Uh... Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I I just have an Instagram. It's Luck Likes Luke because Luck Likes Luke. And uh, yeah, feel free to follow me. I post acting, um, poetry, painting, and other shit. Enjoy. Give it up for Lou one more time, everybody. All right, so we have Anna Filbert on deck. We have Craig Greenberg, Cannon, Mohammed Patel, Brittany Ledesma, Maddie Tass, Signa, Pemberton McGuire, and more. Can we get this next comedian? Very funny. Can we get John Waters up to do some jokes for us, everybody? Give it up for John Waters. Thank you. Um, friend of mine recently got engaged to a, uh, a very wealthy man, and uh, he's in sales. I think he sells a very popular product. It's, um, yeah. this is you? Fuck, how am I blanking on it? It's on, yeah. uh, 
cocaine. You're not okay. It's in high demand. Is your friend or? But uh, now she's just drenched in extremely expensive clothing and jewelry. And something that she does now that I just absolutely hate is whenever someone comments or compliments anything she's wearing, she just says nothing else but the price. They'll be like, yo, girl, I really love that necklace. $10,000. I hate that. I think I hate that because I could never do that. I could never do that. I look like an idiot. They're like, hey, John, I really like that jacket. Lost and found. I look like a moron. But I, I think I have officially hit rock bottom. Um, I, I now have ads on my Netflix. <laughs> yeah. And I, I know this because I can see you all whispering to each other, they have ads? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Apparently, I'm the only one watching them. <laughs> yeah, I had a girl come over to my apartment recently, From uh, it was a hinge date, we had sex and watched Netflix. You know, a classic combo these days. Well, the next day she ends things with me, and now I'm left wondering, was it the sex, or was it those ads? I think it's a valid question, right? Because I can only assume she didn't like the sex. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> but I know. She didn't like those ads? Because every time we would cut to it, she'd go, oh my god, it's literally like five dollars more. <laughs> I'd be like, actually, it's seven ninety nine. dollars so why don't you get your tax right? But to be honest, I don't think it was going to work out between us anyways, because the whole night, we were just fighting over what to watch. She was so adamant about watching a foreign film. I feel like this is a very foreign film crowd. <laughs> I, uh, I, I just refuse to watch it. it I, I don't have anything of, against foreign films. I just don't like watching them with other people, all right? I don't like it because it exposes my reading level. Because <laughs> I'm way behind everyone. I saw the movie Parasite in theaters. This might have been the biggest mistake of my life. I'm just in the back like, holy shit, it's, it's a little fast. Can you guys slow it down? Jesus Christ. People start laughing before me. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Fuck, that is funny. Damn it. Now I look like an idiot in this theater. I have plenty of time. Uh, I, I visited my grandma recently. Um, she's always yapping about the war. The war so hard. It was, it's been 80 years, Grandma. <laughs> Get over it. You didn't have food. <laughs> but it made me think. I was like, holy shit. Like, if we had a world war today, that'd be crazy. That'd be nuts. That'd be scary. Like, it, it would scare me to think a bunch of guys I know going to war. Like, it would scare me to think a bunch of me is going to war. I, I can handle war. But what scares me the most is just thinking that I'd have to see a bunch of guys Instagram storing mid-battle. <laughs> you know, seeing a bunch of boomerangs of them throwing grenades. <laughs> and then the caption, we out here. I want no part of that. I would hope that if there was a war again, like a world war, they'd bring back some form of entertainment. Because like way back they used to have a drummer boy. That must have been awesome. But. I feel like nowadays they just have like a DJ on top of a tank. I'd gladly take that responsibility. I take Ox. Just be like, oh shit. All right, back dad, how we feeling? I want to see you get fucking crazy on three. All right, get those hands up. All right, one, two, everybody, fucking take them out. I'd be ruthless. I'd be bad up there. All right. Um, I haven't, I haven't had much sex lately, other than that time when the girl ended it because I had ads. Uh, but, and that's a true story, by the way. Crazy. Um, <laughs> but I was recently uh, invited to a gangbang. I received a, 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 an invitation in the mail. I didn't know that this was how it was done, but it kind of makes sense. You have, you have to get a head count, right? Yeah. But I, I, I RSVP'd no. I lied and said I was booked up for another gangbang. But the truth is, is I, I just don't think I could do it. I don't think I'd be very good at it because I'm just, I, I'm not assertive enough, right? Because I'm just going to end up being that guy in the back just like back here. No, no, please. No, go ahead. You were first. Like, could we have gotten an order on this? I feel like some of you have gone twice and I still have not gone once. I mean, come on, she's my girlfriend. Yeah. All right, good night, guys. Everyone, Woo! follow me at Joe Waters Comedy.
it up for John Waters, everybody. I'm sorry. I will probably go to shake your hand and then try to fist bump you when you go to shake my hand like this. <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry about that. I think that was very funny. I love the, uh, the the pantomiming, the gangbang. Give it up for John Waters. <laughs> Hilarious. All right. We got so many amazing acts. Once again, it's a two-drink maybe We have Cannon on deck, Mohammed Patel, Brittany Ledesma, Maddie Tass, Signa, Pemberton McGuire, and more. Can we get... Oh, we're very excited about this next act. He's going to play some piano for us. Craig. Craig, can you... Uh, Craig Glassman? Craig Greenberg. Let's get Craig Greenberg up to play some piano for us, everybody. Give it up for Craig. Chip, 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 yeah. How's it going, everybody? Um, All right, so I'm going to do uh, uh, two, one really short song, the shortest song I've ever written. Um, and then I'm going to do a song that's uh, inspired by uh, New Orleans music. I'm, I'm from New York, but New Orleans is my other favorite city. Anyway, um, this first one's called Headlines. She's gone and I'm good for nothing.
G.I.G. It's Craig Greenberg Music. Um, playing a show March 30th. It's a place in Greenpoint called Truce Bar. Say hello. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Give it up for Craig Greenberg, everybody. Check him out at Greenpoint. That was fantastic. God damn, that guy can play. One, one more time for Craig Greenberg. Follow him on social media. That was phenomenal, fantastic. All right, so we have Mohammed Patel, Mo Patel on deck. We have Brittany Ledesma after that. Maddie Tass, Senor, Pemberton McGuire, Fluke Human, Jasper McLean, and more. Can we get all... Uh, we're going to have some poetry. We're very excited about this next poet, ladies and gentlemen. Can we get Cannon? Give it for Cannon. Going to read some poetry. Didn't you think that maybe I didn't know how to know yet and couldn't you have waited? At the center of the cul-de-sac is a tree to the right, is a child asking his sitter why. The sun is setting the temperature to the most ideal degree for eating ice cream and let's have some, I think, but Ben and Jerry's is two states away, so I jump out at the child, hoping he will laugh. A consolation for Cone dessert, but he cries. The sitter takes his hand, says, I don't know everything. I barely know anything. Then throws me a look like a business mom on the telephone, like, go away for now. We We'll catch up later, all oh, right. I forgot I was dressed as if I never lived here before. If only I could show the child the dirt I collected, we could water it with his scaredy cat tears and see if anything green grows. Woo! Woo! Uh, and this is called, I also had an imaginary friend named Billy. Yes. Okay, Billy. <laughs> yeah, okay, you can laugh at this one. Um, I stashed my pet rubber band in my leotard. I didn't know where else to hide it. Then my gymnastics teacher went to spot me on the balance beam. Instead, reached under my one piece, pulled out my coiled friend. Oh wow, I thought it was a worm, he told me. I just saw on the news some little girl who was hiding worms under her skin. That's what he loved. Yeah. <laughs> um, cartwheels, calluses, hairspray, why? He asserted his hand under the tight velour suit as first step to inquiry. Why not just ask, is that a worm? Have you given it a home under the wrapper of your warm, tender body? I could have told him, it's not a worm, coach, but good job. You are close. Actually, it's a rubber band that I feel emotionally close to, and she doesn't live under my skin, but between it and my clothes. <laughs> Woo! Give it up for Cannon, everybody. That was fantastic. Do you have a book or anything that we can? Oh, we gotta get. We gotta get a book. Give it up one more time for Cannon. And that fan, the pump shirt. I think we need to uh, a round of applause for the pump shirt. We're, we're trying to set up an open mic at Pumps. Me and Fred Bullingen. That's that's our. We're gonna do a poetry reading at Pumps. We're gonna set that up. Give it up one more time for Cannon, everybody. Fantastic. Okay, we've got Brittany Ledesma on deck. We've got Maddie Tass coming up. Sing Ya, Pemberton, McGuire, Fluke Cuban, Jasper, McLean, Spoken P, Bugs, and more. Can we get this next guy? He's just one of the best. We just love him. Give it up for Mo Patel, everybody. Hey, give it up for Matt. Thank you. You guys can give more for Matt. You're also doing the thing he's doing. I know you're all sitting there thinking, like, when's my turn? But, you know, he's trying. 
Uh, all right, yeah, growing up, my mother told me not to tell people that I'm Muslim. Uh, but like, she should have thought of that before she named me Muhammad. Uh, people say, why don't you go by your middle name? It is Abdullah, that's not much better. My full name is Muhammad Abdullah Patel. In the eyes of bigot, that might as well just be Al-Qaeda Sharia Law 911, right? <laughs> The only more Muslim name I can think of is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> and he got to pick that one, right? Maybe I should just flip it and go by Lou Alcindor now. <laughs> Dude, if there were more black people in this audience, it would be fucking wild for that joke. <laughs> Old, Old black people, yeah, like you, bud. <laughs> No, he did. Fuck you, all right? <laughs> this is a minority on minority thing. White people, fucking stay back, all right? <laughs> Telling us what to do. All right, um, I don't know, man. So my, my, mom, my mom always wanted me to be a doctor. Uh, she even told me I studied pre-med. Uh, but I studied ancient Greece and the Roman Empire, uh, which is kind of shitty medical training. <laughs> I oh, you're sick? Did you try sacrificing a goat? Oh, uh, that didn't work. We go old school, we'll get some leeches up in here. Oh shit, you've got chlamydia. Yeah, that's a curse. You're gonna have to fuck that goat. Uh, there's a lot of fun stories from that time period. Uh, one of my favorites is Oedipus Rex. Do we know Oedipus? Yeah. Yeah. Right, if you don't, um, Oedipus is most famously known for having sex with his own mother. Right? But he did other things. <laughs> yeah, we do. It's on record. He saved a town. He killed a sphinx. He solved a riddle. But all anybody remembers the one time he went down on his ma, you know? Or the eight times. Who's counting? I want to write a sequel to Oedipus Rex where he goes around and he fucks other people's moms. I'm going to call it Oedipus Rex Your Mom's Pussy. <laughs> Yeah, that's a joke for intellectuals. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, here's another joke for intellectuals. It's a math joke. It's kind of hard. Um, people say 69 is the funniest number. It looks like two people noshing on each other's genitals. But I think 769 is a much funnier number because now there's a third in the mix. <laughs> And they're not having a good time. <laughs> you know why? Because they're not a team player. I get how seven, the heads like pointed away. <laughs> All right, well, whatever. I don't want this to be like school for you guys. <laughs> we all saw human centipede. <laughs> you already had your turn. Um, <laughs> this isn't the, uh, what, where are you reading again? Human centipede. Sorry, fuck you. All right. Uh. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> you kind of fucked up the rhythm there. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll interrupt your poetry next time. We'll see how that goes. I don't know. Uh -huh. My, uh, my dad would teach me lessons in weird ways. I remember one time we were driving around. I was on passenger seat. My father was driving and smoking a cigarette. And we stopped at this red light and this car pulls up next to us and the guy rolls down his window and he says to my father, hey, you really shouldn't blow smoke in your son's face. Uh, and then my father hit me in front of them. <laughs> and then the light turned green and we drove off. <laughs> and that's how I learned how to mind my own goddamn business, everybody. <sighs> I, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to fight. My friend tried to show me how to throw a punch and after two hours he gave up and decided I'm a biter. <laughs> so I'm gonna, that's gonna be my strategy, I'm gonna bite ya. You might win the fight, but you're not going to fight me again, because that's unhygienic. Uh, yeah, I'm not really a real man, I guess. Uh, I cried during that movie, Old Yeller. Right? Do we know the movie Old Yeller? Yeah, not even at the sad ending. I'm scared of dogs. I cried five minutes into Old Yeller. Actually, the ending was my favorite part of that movie. Just like, oh, is this just going to be about his, that boy and his gun now? 
I hope he uses it to shoot more dogs. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm thanking everybody left tonight. It's a <laughs> it's a gracious thing. Um, somebody yell Pablo. <laughs> My name's Muhammad, uh, and I don't have cocaine. <laughs> I know I look like I have. Co I know I look like I have cocaine. <laughs> But if I had cocaine, I could afford a chain, all right? Oh, yeah, I've got you. I don't know, man. Uh, when I was in middle school, we had to do this project where we had to write about teenage problems. And I want to write about teenage pregnancy. And my teacher said, no, I don't know that's a problem. You're going to have to worry about Muhammad. I don't even know if you're going to have to worry about adult pregnancy. <laughs> I'm here to say I'm having sex now, and it is pretty cool. All right? Actually, I slept with this girl recently, and she finished first. Get over that. All right? Well, she said she was done. Um, actually, she said, "Are you almost done?" And I said, "Well, are you done?" And she said, "I might as well be." Uh, man, sex is weird. Uh, I don't like it when a girl screams my name during sex. Because I don't know if she's talking about me or the prophet. <laughs> I, I could be doing so well, she's screaming my name. Or I'm doing so poorly, she has started praying. Um, and converted to Islam. Which, maybe I was doing well, I don't know. Uh, if you get dick so good, you converted to Islam. <laughs> That's me, baby. <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like I'm out of time, but uh, I would be remiss to say if anybody's interested about Islam, um, after the show. No, that's a weird thing to say. Uh, that's like a weird. Honestly, I feel like a creep. And like a worst person. I don't know. All right, thank you. Woo! Give it up for Mo Patel. He will answer any questions you have about Islam after the show. Just see him right now. Just talk to him right now if you have any questions. All right, we have Matty Task on deck. We have Sing Ya coming up. Pemberton McGuire, Flew Cuban, Jasper McLean, Spoken P, Bugs, Peter Glissman, David Segovia. Let's get one of our favorites. Check out the social media. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have one of the legends. Give it up for Brittany Ledesma. Brittany Ledesma, everybody. Um, and if you want to talk to me after about QVC or Cutco, I got knives. Okay, that's Woo! my rebuttal to that. Okay. I also didn't realize Oedipus, like, had, like, fucking his mom was a side quest. I thought that was the main quest. Okay. I, um, I haven't been having sex a lot. I have an unstable loft bed. And I've kind of just leaned into the lifestyle. Like, you can't hook up with someone in a loft bed, first of all, because you have to watch them climb up that tiny ladder and still be attracted to them. Like, I, I saw a man climb up that tiny ladder, and I saw parts of him I've never seen him myself. Okay? I also don't, like, he was in the bed alone. I saw it, like, the middle was drooping, and I was like, I'm not going to end up on untold stories of the ER because I decided to fuck in a bed meant for tweens. Okay, if I'm going to get on TLC, it's going to be for my 600-pound life when I give up. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a little dark, but I think this is funny, so just bear with me. Um, St. Patty's Day, you have to wear green, right? Like, imagine having to report an assault on St. Patty's Day, and they're like, what were you wearing? And you're like, pink. <laughs> it's kind of the only day where what you're wearing does dictate if you're asking for it. <laughs> what? It's a joke about assault. <laughs> yeah, it was bound to happen at an open mic at some point. 
<laughs> no, I um, I I uh, I had PTSD. This is also gonna get a little dark. I wasn't planning on doing this material, but I just have to say, uh, yeah, okay, she's hot enough to get raped. <laughs> Uh, I have PTSD and um, a lot of my friends have asked me like, oh, did you get it from a war? And it's like, you, I'm not poor. <laughs> you know, like, I made it my personality trait for a year, year, few years being assaulted and then I heard this girl, I don't like talking about how she was like sexually assaulted and I was like, fuck you, that's my thing. You know, I would never wish rape on my worst enemy. I don't want them getting the sympathy and treatment I deserve. A dark joke about it. Oh well. Let's see if she can climb her way out of this set. Stay tuned for the next two and a half minutes. <laughs> uh, I um, I wanted to try this bit. I'm doing a naked comedy show this week. None of y'all are invited. Um, it's weird. I don't want to post about it because I'm like, I don't want people to come to support because I'm like, I know you're there to see me naked. You know, like that's not like, I don't know. I um. I feel like that's the only time that being naked on stage would be weird to clap your ass. <laughs> you know? Like, I was a stripper in college, okay, for a year. I wasn't good at it. I never really got called sexy, but I did get called goofy a lot. <laughs> I think it's because I would, like, skip up to the guy and be like, oh, 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 you want a lap dance? <laughs> I pull a bloody handkerchief out of my ass. <laughs> was pretty goofy. <laughs> a lot of people think you become a stripper because you have daddy issues. It's far from the truth. I have a great relationship with my father. We fuck once a week. <laughs> I hate saying that, but it gets a laugh every time. We don't fuck. We make love. <laughs> God. No, uh, the first lap dance I gave, uh, the guy told me, uh, well, he gave me $100 beforehand. He was like, I know it's the first lap dance you're giving, here's $100. And after he told me, that was horrible. And then he gave me a lap dance to show me how to give a lap dance. Which that can't happen at any other job. You can't be like at an open house and like have a real estate agent showing you the house and be like, you're not really selling me this house. <laughs> Let me show you how to sell this house. Then just like clap your ass in front of her to brony. Uh, one of the clubs I danced at, they went viral over the pandemic because they were offering curbside lap dances. Talk about sex traffic. There you go, lots of honking. God, that one's just fun for me. Uh, I, um, I, uh, I'm bi, you can tell because I talk about it a lot, and only date men. <laughs> no, I'm one of the good ones, I get pussy. I, um, I, the last girl I was seeing, she was a bi girl, and I personally don't like to date bi women because we kind of suck. Okay? It's like the participation award of sexualities, okay? Like, none of us... Like, we are just as clueless as, like, 15-year-old boys with pussy, you know? They're like, I don't know how to get it, but at least a 15-year-old boy will be rude to you. And you're like, maybe he wants to fuck. <laughs> Not that I fuck 15-year-old boys. Normally that gets a laugh, a uh, let down on the pedophile joke. That's fine. We did pedophile, we did rape. Um, don't worry. Uh, okay, I'm gonna end on this. I, um... I, I was, uh, I, I had a girlfriend before I moved here. We broke up because she wasn't lesbian enough. Uh, yeah, to move across the country with me three months into a relationship. Shitty way to find out you're the butch, okay? First thing I realized started dating women was that you don't have to shave before sex, but you should trim your fingernails. Which is logical, you know, like I should have known that beforehand. Like for years I've just been letting guys with long fingernails scratch out the inside of me like a dead fetus. Coming back to haunt me. Like they're drawing tally marks in there. There's people, there's fire. I was like, shit, this pussy's civilized. Uh, this has been what it's been. All the triggers, we just push all of the buttons tonight. The truth.
is severe tonight. That's just the energy. That's what we're doing, everybody. We're going to make it through. Thank you for saying that. Give it up one more time for Brittany Ledesma. Telling it like it is. We love it. We love it. We're the best. All right. We have so many amazing acts. We have the amazing Signal on deck. On deck. After that, we have Pemberton McGuire, Fluke Human, Jasper McLean, Spoken Beat, Bugs, Peter Glissman, David Segovia, Johnny, Via, Satya, Marwa, and more. Let's get, can we get Maddie Task up to the task, everybody? We're going to have some tunes. Uh, Maddie Task. That sounds normal. Hi! Hey. hey! I'm turning off the volume on this. Do you need this up? Alright, now I'm, I'm gonna be maybe loud. Let me know if you need it higher. Yeah, can you turn more? Yeah. Alright, this is like all the way. This is all the way. Everyone's been doing such cool shit tonight, I just want to say. <laughs> there we go. That's noise. Hi, my name is Maddie Task. It's mad like the emotion with an I at the end, and then task like the word task, like task force. Um, I literally moved out here like a month and a week ago. So I'm brand new. It's great to be here. Yeah! I came here from Ohio. I've been meaning to live here for a very long time, so I'm very excited to finally make it. OH BABY! Yes. I grew up around Cleveland. I went to Ohio State, and I did live in Cincinnati for a while, so I've been all up and down. Okay. Guys, baby. Anyways, um, I have a couple songs on Spotify. I'm not going to play any for you because I am, well, to be totally honest with you, I'm taking a tea break in a couple days. And because I'm so excited about it, I've been smoking a lot. So my voice is kind of raspy, and I wanted to pick a song that works well with a raspier voice. So I picked this one. It's kind of dark. I apologize. Um, but I describe it as Death Cab for Cutie meets Female Rage. And it's called Canvas. <laughs> Sorry, we're just warming up. Tonight will be the first time in Democrat's town. 
I choose to drown in wine instead of knowing I'm a sound Season dousing me, risking a fire. Well, what if I just struck a match? Would you sit with me? Burn what we thought was evergreen in the name of finally seeing through the trees. Officially, so if you like what you heard, um, you can follow me on Instagram at alwaysoff underscore task. I am playing at the Purgatory on Sunday, May 12th. If you want to come out, that's me. I'm Maddie Task. Nice to meet you. Give it up for Maddie Task, everybody. Welcome to New York. That was phenomenally great. You're kicking ass. Get Maddie Tass some gigs, everybody. Get in Purgatory. Check out at Purgatory. I'm, I, too, am a Buckeye. I don't really like to broadcast that. Peter Glissman is in the house. Ohio State has more alumni than any other university in the world. It is a degree factory, and we are the products, everybody. Kicking ass in New York. Give it up one more time yeah. for Maddie Tass. All right, fantastic. We have Pemberton, McGuire on deck. We have Luke Woo! Human, Jasper, McLean, Spoken Pete, Bugs, Peter Glissman, David Segovia, Johnny, Viasathia, Marwa, John King, Kirk Windsor, Andreas, Sandra Hills, and more. Let's get, oh my God, I can't even believe this. This was such a special surprise when I got this message that one of our all-time greatest open micers, we were very lucky last summer to have a residency of sorts with this artist from Montreal, all the way from Montreal, Amazing music, amazing outfits. Check it out. Give it up for Sing Ya, everybody. Sing Ya!
Can I use that thing for a second? Hey, everybody, <laughs> open <laughs> mic. Give it up for Sing Ya. One more time, everybody. Oh, there goes the magic. There goes the magic. All right, give it up one more time. All the way from Montreal, everybody. Check out. Yeah. Check out the music online and all the uh, all the all the great art that Sing Ya makes. I mean, give it up one more time. All the way from Montreal, everybody. That is talent. Great music. Thank you for coming out. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Are you doing any gigs? Other gigs? Just watch out what they're, they're going to be coming. Hell yeah. <laughs> watch out, New York City. Give it up one more time. Come on, for Sing Ya! Yeah. Right, we have so many amazing acts. This is just the beginning. We have Fluke Human on deck. I mean, come on, you know you want to see that. Jasper McLean after that. Spoken Pete, Bugs, Peter Glissman, David Segovia, Johnny, Via Satya, Marwell. John King, Kirk Windsor, Andreas Sonder Hills. Let's get Is Pemberton McGuire in the house? Give it up for Pemberton McGuire. Great writer. I know her. Hello everyone. It's me again. Woo! Pemberton McGuire. Woo! Um, yes. I know we do this thing sometimes where we like record little bits of the performance. I don't know. I just um Okay. Can you go? Yeah we do. I don't think we're doing it quite fine. I'm just gonna get into this. How's everyone doing tonight? Woo! Wonderful. I, I wrote this um today. Uh I procrastinate, I sign myself up for this and then I write. It's not the other way around and I know it should be that way. No no, I'm Alright. Um No no, I'm sorry. This is kind of personal, so I want everyone to pull, to just hone in. Let's hone in. Yeah. So, um, I've been thinking about birds lately. I've been thinking about crows, and I've been thinking about hens. In Indiana, my mother and I raised chickens. Reckoning with the vacuum of space, I would leave behind when I went to college. My mother began prepping for my absence. Over the years, my space was filled Oh, my space was filled snugly with three cats, seven chickens, who would die and be replaced as winter's predators plucked them away, but without fail, there would be a reliable seven birds. Back when I named them, these birds would go by monikers such as Frida, Pancake, Poppy, Tomato, Beans, Magdalene, Vetus, Eunice, Griddle, Skillet, and my beloved little toot. <laughs> There was once a chicken I named War. <laughs> and perhaps it was namesake at work when he grew up to be a beast, a rooster, who tore into his sisters with ferocious cruelty, raping them and ripping feathers from their heads. Damn. This was deemed unforgivable and he was turned into a bland soup. <laughs> <laughs> And now that I've been in the city, I've begun to think about pigeons. How sweet they are and how holdable they look. How easily they are absorbed into my poorest life. Like specks of dust on old film. Almost imperceptible, yet constant. A while back, I saw one sprawled out on its back. In the middle of the sidewalk. Its feet pointed up towards me. I thought she must have died so dramatically. Like Evelyn McHale in that photo, Beautiful Suicide, I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen it. Her body cradled the remains. Her body cradled in the remains in the frame of a car. Like a woman holding her wrists to her collarbones, her wings were lifted, folding her body into the shape of a crumpled gray heart, and her eyes were closed like a dream. So I took a photo of her and captured her and all of her beautiful symmetry, and for this, I am somewhat sorry. As I feel my frontal lobe entering its final phase of this horrible cranial metamorphosis, stalled by early alcohol consumption and drug use and probably like a little, little, little bit of lead paint, I find myself listening to jazz music, like really listening to it. <laughs> I wash dishes and look out the window, and when I hear the song Taste of Honey by Paul Desmond, I think of the city and the color gray. I gravitate towards gray. It manifests in my wardrobe, and when I get dressed in the morning for my 
big girl job with its greenish gray granite floors that really sing with the sound of a good stiletto heel. I think about the color of pigeons and the pink in their necks, iridescent greens in their bright red feet. I think about white pigeons and the speckles of brown and the golden stripes. And 1775, Marie Antoinette donned a particular shade of flea that was charismatically called puce. <laughs> she noted how the fleas, these pests, changed hues of brownish pink as they filled with human blood. The strange beauty embedded in the body of pestilence, the French would call their loved ones my flea, mon, mon puce. And I wonder, do I have it in me to call someone my pigeon? I stopped naming my chickens when a sly fox took them away from me. The night before, I had a premonition. I was loitering in a parking lot with a man less superstitious than myself who laughed when I looked at 100 black crows in the gray sky and gray grass. They panted with V-shaped beaks and unblinking eyes while they looked rabid like mammals. They looked desperate like humans. I woke the next day to my mother screaming with her knees in the grass. She held little Poppy, a dying lump of golden feathers, a baby sunshine eclipsed by tragedy. She was my mom's favorite because when we called her name, she ran to us every time. Oh. Poppy. The fox had killed our seven, one at a time, left them to rot in the dirt. None were eaten, only slaughtered. I could not understand the fox, but do I have it in me to forgive him? Thank you. Number number 10, Maguire. Wow, that was beautiful. Is that, are you a creative writing student or? No, I just do it for fun. Phenomenal, we love it, we love it. For love of the game, give it up for Pemberton Maguire. Fantastic, great, great. We love it. We love. I mean, is there anything better than having somebody read to you? It's like that's what you do with your kids. You read to your kids. I think it's beautiful, and it's the best form of show business. Poetry is the least popular, but the best form of show business, and we love it. All right, so we have Fluku, and you're you are on deck. We have Jasper McLean coming up. Bugs, Peter Glissman. We got to get Spoken P up real fast. Spoken P is an important man. He's got places to be. He's gonna come up real fast and read. I think. Maybe something erotic, maybe not. Give it up for Spoken P. <laughs> What's up, everybody? What's going on? Yeah, so I am going to read some erotic shit right now. So. <laughs> erotic shit. <laughs> so this is called Dirty with the Flirty. Woo! <laughs> You'll get it. Babe, you're so banging shit, I'll bang your moms. And on salams, I'll give her arms. And babe, pray for what I'm gonna do to you from the book of Psalms. And don't look to or have any qualms. And I hope you're shaving. If not, I'm gonna drop a sperm bomb and clear that hair out like Agent R in Vietnam. <laughs> And just with my eyes, I'll be on, which is visually impregnate. And don't say it's impossible. Let me be frank. They said the same to Mary, and God put Jesus in her tank. Have you busted so much? I'm going to leave your mind blank. And please don't talk to your girls, because they'll hate on you and act stink. A session with me on some dirty wine? Have you speaking Jamaican like shabba ranks? <laughs> And you get hot war, and I'll give you me pepper, baby love, just not me see. And I can, and I can see the future, so call me now, like Miss Cleo. You know what me mean? Yes, yes, yes. I'm saying these in retrospect, but with all respect, I need you to genuflect if I'm semi-erect. Cause all I'm gonna do is zoom, zoom in your poom poom like Rex in effect. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 Congratul
I'm gonna get you wet with my sexual dialect. I'm gonna get you wet with my sexual dialect. With me, no toys and special effects. And your body is a building. I'm the architect. But don't get it twisted. Sexually, I'm gifted. I make a pretzel get jealous the way I'm gonna twist you. And I say what I mean, mean what I say. When my pants come off and we're together, baby, clip out the whole day. Shit, my job and priority is to make you nut. Physically, mentally, spiritually, and euphorically. So don't tempt me with a good time telling me you're gonna break me and I can't handle your behind. Shit, I'll fuck you till you're blind and my dick will teach you how to sign. <laughs> welcome you to break my back out. It's been years. I'll give you a porn award and tell you it's on now, my dear. Because I'm doing that, you're not opening uncrutchable thirst. Well, I'm going to want you three to five times a day, and that will be just at first. Give you long and hard, deep strokes to make your blood vessels burst. Oh, and you didn't know? I'm mainly French and Haitian, so be careful. You might get a penis curse. So <laughs> So how about a game of Naked Twister? Right foot yellow, left hand red. Pick up your left leg, insert my whole head. Right hand wrapped up with your hair, and fuck me till I'm dead. Oh shit, you didn't kill me? Fuck it, I'ma bang your brains out till you lose your memory. And I hate the first round, so let's see if you can handle doing the trilogy. I want you so wet, you'll be dripping down to your toes, and hopefully screaming and squirting, and don't talk, and talk dirty in every language and let me know how much it hurts. Fuck it, a long day and night of me and your love canal, I'll read de virginize you. And I'm short and skinny and tell you I'm hung like an Asian until the president transforms to a nice big girl. And yes, it's true. Short and skinny guys, if they got skills, can really put in work. And if the president doesn't want to work, he's fired. My tongue and ten fingers, they're hired. <laughs> And to make sure you feel the maximum of your work, and I'm not some dirty John. The name's P. And I'll bust in your face and baptize you with all of my mini me's. <laughs> and don't wipe it off and get on your knees. Clasp your hands. I'm your father. I'll bust inside you and give you a son and blast again in your face, and that's the Holy Spirit all in one. <laughs> So if you want or need any more of me, text, call, email, or find me on IG. I'm like Santa Claus, because I'm always giving, never to be outdone. And don't forget the name Spoken Pete, because after being with me, I'll sexually tattoo myself to your memory. Thank you. There is a thing called erotic poetry. I will be having an erotic poetry night coming in May, but I also host venues all throughout the city. Um, it's P-E-E-N-Y-C, P-E-E-N-Y-C. This Sunday, I'm actually doing a humongous open mic, uh, revealing a new spot that I got on Canal and Broadway. All of you guys are more than welcome to come. Um, please, P-E-E-N-Y-C, give it up for Matt, and thank y'all so, so much. God bless you. Wow. I mean, wow. What a masterpiece of erotic poetry. Jesus Christ. Can I get that, like, in a leather bound? Let me count the ways. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. I mean... <laughs> Give it up for Spoken P. I mean, that bars, I think is what we call that. We call that bars. Wow. I mean, jeez. Inspirational, romantic, oh, a true romantic at heart. I mean, the great one, the great one. That's right. <laughs> All right, so we have Jasper McLean on deck. Bugs coming up after that, Peter Glissman, David Segovia, Johnny Viasatia, Marwa, John King, Kirk Windsor, Andreas, and more. Let's get, I'm just super excited about the flu human. Let's get the flu human up, everybody. All right, I'm plugging in. All right, yeah, we had uh, we had dead birds, and then we had that that romance novel, and then we got some douchebag with a car. Sexiness going. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. 
Uh, so I'm Flick Human, and uh, I can't always see the right me to be. Trying to decide which guy am I. Pick a different dude when I'm in the mood. And uh, that's the man I am. That's the man I am. The what the moon I am. Let's try it again. The man I am. The what the man I am. Abandoned plans, rearrange me like an anagram Then attach me to me with ampersands I could finger man, keep my composure poker There's a joker in this gambler's hand Oh man <laughs> Am I a stoic or a hedonist? Is this a simulation or do we exist? Known to eat some pizza if they don't have no vegan shit. I'm a faker failure like a colorblind chameleon. Code switching's how I cope with it. Go from avocado picking to coke sniffing with no friction. I ran out of characters, I gotta go fishing. Hope I catch a nice cold pimp with dope diction. I'm watching old Simpsons episodes, check my phone. I'm not drinking till I'm paying off my debt to mow. Bet my whole savings on which fluke is next to blow. Ebb and flow from stupid high to extra low. Let the record show. I'm a faithful flip flopper, fit talker, double fisted my fourth and fifth loggers. Trash talking TikTokers saying their shit's not pure. Then go write a 16 about shit with big knockers. My brain stews with dookie and lame screenplays. I love walking contradictions, I hate Green Day Creating deep fakes of your favorite cheesecake But don't you tread on my potato salad That shit takes three days Where are my intra-extroverts at? I pick whichever one I'm worse at I play slow so I can work fast I lay low so I can hurt grass I mean what I say I might reword that <laughs> I can't always see the right me to be Trying to decide which guy am I I pick a different dude when I'm in the mood And uh, that's the man I am That's the man I am The what? The man I am Abandoned plans, rearrange me like an anagram Then attach me back with ampersands I could pander man, keep my composure poker There's a joker in this gambler's hand I can't always see the right me to be Trying to decide which guy am I I pick a different dude when I'm in the mood And that is Thankfully, the end of that song. Uh, yeah, for today. Didn't go so well, you can tell. I do have one more thing to say, and uh, that is, I'm the Buster Keaton of public speaking. I didn't have braces as a kid. I punched my teeth in and super glued it so they're fucking even. I'm above believing. Cool with Judas, buds with Jesus. I came up from fucking breeding. Pumpkin seeds with bumblebees just to preach this. Y'all know Cherry Coke? Yeah. That shit is very dope. <laughs> if I was in London, I'd be a merry bloke. Yeah. I came up here with no set, like ready go. <laughs> Off stage, my bread's kind of unbalanced. I don't have steady dough. <laughs> in other words, uh, I'm not making so much money. Yeah, I walked in here, uh, I thought that mirror was another room. Where my jokes are funny. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Uh, that was uh, weird. Sorry. I'm fully human. Give it up for Fluke Human. That is pure talent right there, everybody. The guitar, the rhymes. We love it. Are you, do you, have you lived in New York for a long time, Fluke Human? Uh, yeah. All right. We love it, man. Keeping it fucking legit, lo fi. And it, just taking it punk hard. Give it up for the flu cumin. That was phenomenal, man. Dude, love that. All right. We have just the greatest musicians in New York tonight. We have Bugs on deck. We have Peter Glisman coming up. David Segovia. You don't want to miss that. Johnny Via, Satya Marwa, John King, Kirk Windsor. Can we get Jasper McLean up, everybody? Give it up for Jasper McLean. Thank you. Can you all hear me? Hey everyone, my name's Jasper. Um, I'm writing a novel right now, and I thought I'd share a little excerpt with all of y'all. Rowing forced us to face backwards. Noah and I began perks of being tall. It's my first time doing this. Yeah! Alright, is that better? Yeah. You guys see this for us? Okay, perfect. Rowing forced us to face backwards. Noah and I began winning races when we believed we were going the right way. 
Our legs propelled the boat as our backs swung over the hull. The rhythm increased, and instead of crashing into the next stroke like I had done so many other times, I inched in steadily, dipped the blade, and drove with my legs. I focused on the scar on Noah's neck and resisted the urge to glance over my shoulder at what lay ahead. The boat surged as our hearts pumped on adrenaline. Noah told me the story of his scar while we watched the sun fall below the water one day. He said he was in seventh grade when it happened. His father was working the night shift. Noah was washing the dishes while his mother tucked his siblings in with parables. He waited for the lights to turn off and the door to his mother's room to close. Then he tiptoed into the basement where the computer sat unguarded. It'd just be a couple of websites, he told himself. Noah practiced clearing the search history, then launched into a slew of questions his parents refused to answer. He wanted to know why families like his homeschooled their children, why others, like the kids he saw at the supermarket, chose real classrooms. He searched if heaven was real, and if some people really didn't deserve to go there. It was meant to be 20 minutes, turned into hours down rabbit holes he hadn't thought existed. That's when I got carried away, he said. For the first time, the world felt so much bigger. Dad wasn't supposed to be home until the morning anyways. I imagine what it'd feel like to find all the answers at once, for the only people you had known to be your siblings and the characters from Bible stories. I think I would have gone insane if I were him. I looked at all sorts of things, Noah said. Things I wondered, but my parents kept hidden from us. I knew what things he meant. My eyes had been glued to the screen the first time I saw what sex looked like. Unlike Noah, my parents gave me the talk around fifth grade when I asked them what an erection was. But hearing people in the act, that's what made me feel like an animal for the first time. The cursor started pinwheeling and the screen got hot. I didn't know what to do, he said. He clicked every red X, pressed the power button, and even unplugged the cords. But each time he restarted the computer, that video, he never told me exactly what it was, but it remained frozen across the screen. He told me how it felt like Time was standing still and running out all at once. How his father stormed down the stairs and caught him staring sheepishly at the wall. You disgust me, he said, and slapped Noah across the face. He marched Noah to the kitchen and made him strip to his underwear. I imagined Noah's heart racing as every punishment flashed through his mind until the stove clicked and he swore he smelled noxious gas. Turn around, his father roared. Noah's eyes flitted between photos of family trips and Easter dinners stuck in the refrigerator. He felt like he was staring down time. Memories of karaoke in the car and Christmas Eve service melted over the stove fire. That's when his father ripped a metal crucifix off the wall. He walked over to the burner and held it above the flame until it glowed red. He pinned Noah to the fridge with his hands and whispered, never forget his name, and seared a cross into Noah's flesh. After he told me that story, Noah rubbed the scar between his fingers. I just thought you should know, he said. His voice was sincere, and he didn't seem as angry as I felt for him, but his eyes were far away. He pointed at a family of geese floating on the lake. The largest one, who I guess was the mother, led the smaller geese to the deepest section. A gust of wind <laughs> cast itself across the water, but the geese stayed in formation. A wave rippled through them, first the mother, and then the children rocked back and forth, but they kept moving forward. They followed each other to the shore and became silhouettes. Noah was mesmerized by the geese. I imagine they reminded him of everything his scar had taken away. The babies trusted his mother, their mother, in a way that Noah no longer could. He sniffled and wiped his eye with his fingers. I thought about Noah and me, floating in the middle of the lake like geese. When wakes rocked our rowboat, we sat taller. Facing backwards meant seeing all the boats we worked so hard to walk away from. It also meant trusting that we could fight whatever lay ahead without being able to see it. The only thing that we could try to predict was each other. When Noah told me about his scar, it was strange how close I felt to him. Without looking to see if anyone was watching from the boathouse, I grabbed him and pulled his body against mine. As we held each other, I breathed through my nose to remember exactly how everything was. I swore the smell of methane and metal dissipated into the mist off the lake. The air held still, and the light was becoming golden. Thank you so much. Give it up for Jasper McLean, everybody. Is that is that published anywhere? Or? Uh, one day. <laughs>
<laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for coming out and, and sharing that. Give it up one more time for Jasper McLean, everybody. Fantastic. We have the best writers here at KGB Bar, the literary institution. And then we have these amazing acts of all kinds, all disciplines. We're so stoked. We have so many amazing acts to come. We have Peter Glissman on deck. We have David Segovia coming up, Johnny, Via Sathya, Marwa, John King, Kirk Windsor, Andreas Underhills, Eli Ruffer, and more. This is a part two. This is a double scoop. We're, we're stoked about this artist. He's one of our favorites. Let's get Boogie Down Bugs up. Can we get Boogie Down Bugs up again to lay it down for us? Yeah. One of our favorites. He's in the green room. These guys, they own the green room. They're celebs. It's very important what they're doing back there. Give it up for Boogie Down Bugs, everybody. Yeah, you Yeah, for the introduction. I'll let you know when it's done. Yeah. Now, yeah, I'll let you know. Good evening, everybody. I am tired as shit. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's good to be. It's a great feeling to be back at Easy Paradise again. Woo! Met new faces. Uh, I'm gonna start off with this single. Um, I've been doing it for a while. I'm gonna have a little special after that as well. Uh, I'm gonna introduce him after the, the single. And there we go. Matt, you can run it. Woo! Cherry 12s in the jersey. I had to look back at myself and tell myself I can only be me. You know? Still rock them shit, though. Yeah. Lord, be send me. Take these feelings. Send these haters. Watch me fade. I did the fade away. In my throat, back away. Jersey. I haven't had a decent place to live at the Jersey. But what you expect from a ghetto child who's Hershey? 2020. And if a nigga ballin' in the front, fuck a toupee I be going cook in the Dawkins to fix slogans That 91 Terminator, no Chris Stein or Logan Everything be soundin' lovely in my paragraph And I laugh when motherfuckers try stealing my craft So take these feelings, she took my heart I caught her slipping. she saw me fade Picture me go back, Chicago pulls the fade away 85 Jersey where infrared don't give a shit anyway Tryna travel in time, others unraveling my baby girl learning her ABCs No joke though, I had to let you know though My two-piece Clarice glow Watch a hood nigga grow Picture me go back, Chicago Bulls the fade away 85 jersey with infrared Don't give a shit anyway No joke though, I had to let you know though My two-piece Clarice glow Watch a hood nigga grow uh. Been going through these weak bars Telling myself I don't wanna live on the death Like Bruno Mars Got superstars on both with two stars, mission complete I know it's no, I go, it's go far on the floor Others be wasting time, they gotta go I'm telling my fucking mind I guess I am an asshole So, let it be known I'll be the one with the soul With sweat temples, you know 280's here For the loop, okay I did the fade away 85 jersey with infrared Don't give a shit anyway Trying to travel in time Others unraveling crime Sitting here writing these rhymes My baby girl learning her ABC Two, three. Two, eight. Cut that out real quick. Yeah. The Instagram is Boogie Down Bugs underscore EST91. And you already know you next, boy. Get your ass up here. Native, come on now. Woo. Thank you, thank you. All right, we're going to wrap it on a high note. We, we are all tired. Go. We all got work in the morning. <laughs> 7 a.m. Top of the morning shit. <laughs> Woo. Did y'all forget me already? Woo. Oh, man. Jesus Christ. Oh, man, I could raise my mic volume a little bit. Right now. Got it. All right, check one, two. How we doing tonight? Uh, Paradise? You already saw me earlier. Uh, can we get a round of applause for Boogie Down Bucks? He's the illest one. Yeah. Love y'all. All right. Oh, we need to. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, we jumping right in. Yeah. It's acapella. I didn't get to give you no acapella in the beginning. My bad. <laughs> and, uh, 
Word, I'll give you two singles, but uh, I'll give you some of that raw shit right now. You can kick it right up, folks. You going first. Don't ever flash a water. Straight off the top. Straight off the motherfucking top. Rock me down the BK native. Okay. Feel like something amazing. Almost something like trailblazing. I'm raging. Surprised I'm not the one inside a cage. And know that the world's in doomsday. But that's okay. I got a verbal AK. The G U N. You know I preach no sin. But what's kept within? A lot of anger issues just next flow. Can damage your tissue. I hit your clavicle. You're incompatible. But my brothers don't need a reference from blood and notes. So who got smoke? A nigga all my life. That's no joke. Nigga, fuck around. Your soul and body will get broke for ducking cash. This whole world. You kiss my ass, a grown ass man will treat your ass like an MTV fan. Don't ever flash your water cash in a bar. I've got to double this guy, man. It's just fucking disgusting. Bro. I swear to Christ, let's go. All right, let's kick it. They were out of such a throw, they go to see you grow. 20 shorties on the boat, singing different notes. Switch flows, every four lines, that's the killer joke. Switch flows, 54 times, leave a victim's no shit. Yeah, I need to fall back. I'm gonna spin up like a Beretta shit. Let them call the jazz. We got two mics and two bars. I'll wear them like two swords. Rain like these loose hearts. Tommy's at a two board. Coming from the city, throwing knuckleheads. And you got lights. Bobby's like lights. What's the shot? You're the light bright. Speak upon war. Who's your boss? Who's the delegator? Listen to the law. Cooks and frauds. Hold the delegators. Don't ever flash your water cash. Be paradise has been honored. We're gonna go check out. Thank you for supporting us so much. Yeah. I'm gonna be a man. Be a man. Be a man. Thank you so much. That's all. Hey, man. Yeah. Hell yes. Get a call in five hours. Hey, good, good. The bards boogie down bugs yeah. and angel Lugo everywhere. The divine poetry. Is that a uh, gaudy? Is that um, is that the Armando Sante gaudy? What is that? What is that sample from? Angel Lugo. What is that? What is that? Uh, what is that sample from? Oh, that. Yeah. Green Book? You've never seen it? Really? Yeah, <laughs> oh my god. They're in a bar, he gets some food, uh, and they like stop off. There's these two guys at the end of the bar. He pays the, the waiter with like like fucking like six stacks of fucking yeah. cash. And then he's going out and the guy pulls out the fucking blammer and just goes BAH BAH! They just go out running and he's like, you never flash a lot of cash inside a bar. I feel like people need that knowledge. You're going around fucking publicizing and you're going to get popped. You know, so it won Best that Picture, that didn't it? Not won Best Picture of the yeah. Academy Awards? I had no idea Green Book was that fucking uh, legit. I'll have to check it out. Alright, give it up one more time for Boogie Down Bugs. Uh, fantastic poets, bards. Alright, we have David Sugobi on deck, Johnny Biasathi Marwa, John King, Jason King, Kirk Windsor, Andre the Sunder Hills. Let's get this guy's got a show this Friday night at Gotham Comedy Club, everybody. He's headlining. Let's give it up for the engineer of comedy. Give it up for Peter Glissman. Our third, our third Buckeye, our third Buckeye of the night. Uh, fourth. Fourth. What? Really? Who else? I'm from Ohio. Oh my God. Buckeye's in the house. Let's give it up. Uh, I'm Jeremy. I'm Irish. Uh, Jeremy. 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 Just me? <laughs> this is my best St. Patrick's Day ever. Let me just put it that way. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Happy to be here. I, I tell you, the reason I became a stand-up comic was to give a voice to my pain, because I couldn't stand the sound of my wife's. I'm divorced, thanks. Twice, thanks. My first wife and I were like a couple of Disney characters. We started out as Prince Charming and Snow White. We ended up as Grumpy and Frozen. My second wife was a devout Christian. She taught me about my favorite sin, adultery. She was a vegetarian and she was rather frigid. I was basically a one-man sausage festival. So. I'm on a couple of dating apps, but I wish they would like give dating apps the real names they should have. There's a dating app called Our Time, but it really had to be called Has Passed. <laughs> long, long ago. I'm on a dating app called The League, but they forgot to add every woman on the app says to guys, you're, I'm out of your league. <laughs> 
Dating at my age is kind of difficult, but you know it's even like so I'm over 60. I'm pitching a reality show about my sex life, Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> Dating at my age is kind of awkward, especially when you get sexted. Every time I get sexted by a woman my age, I feel like I'm looking at an issue of National Geographic from 1974. <laughs> hey, those aren't emojis. She's topless. <laughs> so I date widows. Because, why not? I took a woman who was widowed not once, but twice, to my apartment on the Upper West Side. I said, I'm sorry, my place is so small. She said, that's all right, I'm used to guys in a box. <laughs> so I was told I'd be able to perform here tonight, as long as I didn't say anything offensive or controversial. So, speaking of Catholicism, <laughs> I went to Catholic school for 12 years. I call it atheist prep. You guys know about Catholics? Yes. You touch yourself, you're going to hell. You touch little boys, you're going to Boston. <laughs> Catholics are big on funerals. I'm going to get cremated. I like to think outside the box. Catholics like pain so much, they took the Bible and they added more chapters. So I've been giving this a lot of thought. Maybe you guys can help me out with this concept. I don't have much use for the New Testament, but this is a little bit deep. Have you ever wondered if the Virgin Mary had a good time on Mother's Day? I'm going to say no. I think every year she was slumped in the corner, bawling her eyes out. Jesus would come home, Mom, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong. My husband smells like sawdust. My son doesn't exist, and I've never been fucked. That's what's wrong, Junior. So... I don't know, the Catholic Church tried two popes, that idea went as bad, about as well as Brexit. <laughs> but instead of two popes, I really think the Catholic Church should be run by three stooges. I think they do a much better job. Can you imagine going to confession? Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Why are you at it? <laughs> and how about matrimony? In the name of the Lord, I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> Am I overthinking this? <laughs> Truth is, I overthink everything. I'm an engineer. I have a bachelor's and a master's degree. The Pentagon gave me a top secret security clearance, gave me a job in counter, counterintelligence. But they had a budget cut, so I got demoted to counterintelligence. <laughs> I couldn't handle the stress, so I took a job in intelligence. Now I work construction and I make more money than ever. That's smart. <laughs> so it's nice that now we've talked about how COVID is all over and done with. Everybody's back in business, back to normal. Four years running now. I mean, come on, high school lasted four years. We all survived, at least those of us who graduated. So I'm back to that acting career I never had. I don't know about anybody else. I, I don't take direction well. I was at a commercial audition. This casting director said, can you be a little more Catholic? I forgave him. I've done a lot of student movies. I got left back. I've done a lot of off-off Broadway. Very off-off. Pluto. Right before COVID, I got cast in a new TV show. This would have been a great show, too. It was about this all Jehovah's Witness paramedics unit. Third Watchtower. I swear to God, I, I thought I had potential there. Okay, what's your name? What's your name? What else is going on? Politics. So this is an election year. I don't know. I'm, I'm not really all that excited, to be honest with you. But I think old white guys, there's only two things that we should be doing. Feeding pigeons or running for president. What's your last name? Those are your choices this year, folks. Best of luck. So I smoke weed. But I'm careful. Like I got back from a ski trip a couple of weeks ago. My friend is known as the cookie monster. He makes high strength THC cookies that make you lose your mind. When you're at 12,000 feet for seven straight days in a blizzard, you don't want to get too high. So I've learned there's four kinds of buzzes. See if you agree with me on this. There's the head buzz, there's the body buzz, there's the work buzz, and there's the boner buzz. <laughs> Head buzz, if you smoke a good joint, you feel like you're decapitated, you just don't care, that's a head buzz. If you're walking down the street for a few miles and you can't feel your feet touching the pavement and you forget where you were going in the first place, that's a body buzz. If you're talking to your boss and you can't figure out if he knows you're high, that's a work buzz. 
If you wake up the morning after a hot date and you can't tell if the Viagra works, even though you still have an erection, that's a boner buzz. Try and watch out for those folks. You guys have been great. I'm Pete Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The comedy stylings of Peter Glissman, everybody. Check him out this Friday, Gotham Comedy Club. That is a hot mic. That is a very hot mic, so I'm going to stay as far back as I can. All right, we've got, let's just get, let's get David Segovia up. The great David Segovia is going to play some music. We have Johnny on deck. We have Sadia Marwa after that.
Second song is fantastic. Thank you for uh, thank you. Give it up one more time for David Segovia, everybody. Styling and profiling here on Monday night. So we have the uh, 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 You're up in two people. You're up in two people. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. So we have Via on deck. We have Marwa after that. We have John King, Jason King, Kirk Windsor, and more. Can we? Get Johnny. Give it up for Johnny, everybody. This is great. This great personal style. This might be a personal question, but how is everyone doing financially? Um, so just want to start off with that. Yeah, good. Because I've been struggling like financially lately. But the best part about it is that it's this is easier to maintain because you can't afford a lot of food. You know, people come up to me like, "Wow, Johnny, you look so good." I'm like, "Thanks, I haven't eaten in two days." <laughs> but my name is uh, Gianni. Uh, fun fact about my name is that my dad named me after Gianni Versace. Yeah, he uh, wasn't a fan or anything. It's just that Versace was shot and killed two days before I was born. That no, was serious. Uh, he died on July 15. Uh, I was born on July 17. You can call it a summer miracle or whatever. But uh, my dad saw his name on the news and he was like, ah, oh, fuck it. You know, I'll name him. And he told me if he wasn't dead, he was going to name me Giancarlos. And in that moment, I never felt so relieved hearing that someone was shot and killed. <laughs> Yeah, seriously, I just wish my dad would have named me something more useful, you know? I wish he would have gave me a name like uh, Tequila, you know? Maybe my mom would have held me tighter as a baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So the dark stuff, all right. Stay away from that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if you guys could tell my mom drinks. Um, the last year. <laughs> but she's a she's a product. I call her like more of a productive drinker because whenever she drinks, she gets shit done. You know, she, whenever she starts drinking, she cleans the entire house. It's amazing. And whenever I come home and the house starts to get dirty, I like to jiggle a six pack just to get her motivated and clean the house. <laughs> okay. Um, I saw in the there's a trailer for a movie called uh, The American Society for Magical Negroes. Have you guys seen that? <laughs> that wasn't a joke, but 
Yeah, there's, there's a movie with that title, and it's giving me the courage to work at a movie theater just so I can make white people uncomfortable. You know, I'm, wor I'm working behind the counter, and a white couple comes up to me. I'm like, "Hi, what movie would you like to see today?" And they're just like, uh, "Can we see American Society?" And I'm just like, "American Society." No, I don't. I don't see a name with that a movie with that name. No, are you sure that's the name? And they're like, "Well, try American Society of Magical." And I'm just like. No, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. Why don't you say the full title? Go ahead, do it. I dare you. And then the guy is just like, uh, I see a key also over there. Let me just. <laughs> um, I'm in a relationship, which I'm kind of good. I'm glad because I don't do well being single. Main problem with me being single is that I, I never feel like I'm good enough for the person that I'm dating. You guys ever feel that way? Just me? All right, thank you. You got you in the front. <laughs> no, I, I just never feel like I'm good enough. And it was a, it's, it all started with this moment when I was a kid. This is a true story. Uh, I was about eight or nine, and me and my friend were hanging out at a park, and this guy pulls up in his car, and he sticks his head out the window, and he says, do you kids want some free candy? And, you know, me and my friend, we're not stupid, but, you know, we're from the Bronx, so, you know, dinner. So we ran towards the car full speed. Like we ran so fast. You would think we were running away from a predator, nonetheless running towards a predator. And then, and then uh, afterwards, he uh, he saw us running. He was just like, ugh, never mind. Stuck his head back in the car and drove away. And in that moment, I just it was like, what, were we not good enough to get molested? What the fuck? And I took it way harder because <laughs> if you're not good enough to get molested, I, the problem is you. Like honestly, like if you're if you're not good enough, then it's like so fucked up. You know? Oh wait, fuck! I fucked that one up. <laughs> Never mind. How many people are here from New York? Woo! Yeah. yeah. Woo! Yeah. All right. So maybe you guys would be on board for this one. I feel like uh, with, with New Yorkers, I feel like our eyes has been avoid, uh, averted to overseas. We're not focusing on like the changes that are happening here. You know? It's not good or bad changes, but it's changes nonetheless. Like, it's changes like, well, when did Mexicans start, you know, taking over the candy hustles in the train station? No? I'm not saying it's a bad change, I'm just saying, like, I remember back then it was black teens who were selling candy to raise money for their high school basketball team. And now I don't see them anymore. Now all you see is a Mexican lady, and she has a baby wrapped around her back, and that baby has another baby wrapped around their back, and they're holding out a Snickers bar, and I'm supposed to keep my money in my wallet after seeing that shit? God damn. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's enough for my time. Thank you guys. My name is Gianni. That, you have an incredible biological clock because that was exactly five minutes. You, you, cut, you wrapped it up right at exactly five minutes. Give it up for Johnny, everybody. Named after Johnny Versace, the great fashion icon. And hilarious, all right. We have so many great acts to come. We, this is late night, everybody. This is where it gets exciting. This is where the real magic happens. The pressure's off. All right, let's get. So we have Marwa on deck. We have John King coming up, Jason King. The great Jason King has big news. We have a big news, big announcement to make. Kirk Windsor, Andreas Sondra Hills, Eli Ruffer, Nathan Aberg, Brian Nguyen, a DOK, Lawrence Reese, and more. Let's get, let's get the hilarious Vyas Safia up. Give it up, this guy's hilarious, we're stoked. Give it up for Vyas, everybody. So you're next. Okay, so I give you the... the... Hello everyone. Um, I dressed up today. Uh, this is... So it's because of yeah. I ever wear a suit just to make up for how the way you, you woke up? Like I just woke up and I had white stains all over my shirt. And I'm talking about ice cream, by the way. Don't be fucking perverted. I eat ice cream, and every time I eat ice cream, it makes me cum. <laughs> so I cum all over my shirt when I woke up from the ice cream that turns me on. I usually hold my dick while I eat the ice cream, and it makes me squirt. <laughs> and then I eat it a little bit. 
which is so inappropriate. But what are you going to do? It's 4 a.m. in the morning. You've got to start your grind. I do hustle. I go to the gym right after. I eat a lot of protein. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you guys, you guys ever ride the train? Yeah. <laughs> you enjoy it? <laughs> Sometimes I ride the train. I don't mean to brag. Uh, I I uh, I was riding the train, and before I rode the train, it said like MTA Appreciation Day on March 19th, and join us to thank the employees of MTA. And I think that's a really good sentiment. I just, I feel like actually acting on it could be a little awkward to just go up to an MTA member and be like, hey, uh, th thanks for your service. I really appreciate. They're like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, you know, I see you every day and I appreciate that you, like, fuck you. <laughs> Yeah. If you guys clap again, I'll kill you. <laughs> kill you. My, is it my house or who the fuck is that? It's probably the cool black guys, right? <laughs> if it's cool, yeah, it is. It's meant to be. Uh, all right. <laughs> What's up? I got Jason King to protect me. All right. I, uh. So, I forgot the next joke that's coming. Oh, shit. <laughs> Should I just skip the next? Okay, whatever. I'm doing that. Uh, I have a dad. And my dad... And my dad is so, like, uh, emotional. But it's really confusing. Because he, he he's like, everyone is so emotional. And I'm like... Fuck. What are you doing in a situation like that? My... Parents, I'm glad how growing up I didn't have pets. Because if I had a pet, it would have been... The pet would have been fucking fucked, you know? Especially a parrot. Dude, that parrot would have learned some shit. <laughs> that parrot would have learned all sorts of... It would have learned swear words in English. Thumbel. In parrot. I don't know. It would have... It would have you got to be careful if you have a parrot. You know, you can't, like, watch Quentin Tarantino movies. You might learn the N-word, you know? It's all sorts of ways. It's all sorts of ways you could learn that, like, Xbox Live or me reading from my diary. You know? Because I have... You know what I mean? It's innocent. I just... When I go late at night, I get a glass of milk. Right by my bed, and I just read. I, it soothes me. What can I say? <laughs> yeah. That's how I wake up at four o'clock of the morning. I'm, I'm well rested. Hey, what's up? You guys came out a good time. I just, just talking about my people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You ever, uh, I don't know, I don't really have jokes. <laughs> I just came to make you guys uncomfortable. <laughs> Which I think, I did. <laughs> I think I did a good job. It's going to be hard to follow me. Yeah. <laughs> fucking bullies. <laughs> Look at these fucking bullies. <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though. It means I'm part of something. Yeah. <laughs> or not. Whatever. It's because I, I do something after work. <laughs> That's what it means. I go to a thing where people know me. People know me enough to bully me. That's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> when I first came here, came here, fuck, came here. When I first came here, <laughs> When I first came here, fucking no one knew me, so no one could bully me, which was lame. Now, I got friends. 
Uh, this has got to be five minutes, right? <laughs> 30 seconds. Oh, what? Yeah. Okay, cool. You guys are great. Thank you. The master of the setup. I love it. He has a dad. I have a dad. That's fantastic. Give it up for Bia Sathya, everybody. Woo! Hilarious. The comedy styling. She will be all over, you know, all the hot comedy shows. John King, you are on deck. One of the all-time greats. You're on deck. The legend, John King. We cannot wait. We got Jason King after that. Back-to-back -back kings, everybody. You're not going to see that anywhere else. Kirk Windsor, Andrea Saunders hills But first... It's poetry time, everybody. Let's give a big round of applause for Marwa. Gonna read some poetry for us. Give it up for Marwa. Oh, you're gonna say Nobody cares. Yes. Hi, everybody. My name is Maru. That's my uh, stage name. Uh, I'm happy to be here with you, so let's kick it. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Hey, yeah, now, now, yeah. Mmm, oh, many times. Yeah. You gonna pick the wrong one. And oh, many times. You gonna write some song. Talent, it's crazy. All right, Jason King is on deck. Kirk Windsor, Andre Saunders Hills, Eli Ruffer, Nathan Aber. We're not sure if any of those people are here, but Brian Nguyen, I think, is here, so we'll probably get he might be on deck. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here comes the truth bomb. Are you on TikTok? I mean, they're probably gonna ban this guy because he's so truthful. I cannot wait to hear the news that stays news. Give it up for John King. Thank you, Matt. Uh, hopefully this is not fake news, but you never know. Uh, I can't tell sometimes uh, fake news from the real shit. But I, I want to uh, wish everybody a happy green beer recovery day. Did you enjoy your green beer? 
uh, the most exciting moment I'm sure when uh, people exchange green, green projectile vomiting. <laughs> the hottest new sex act. You really have to love them. And they have to be really cute. And your beer has to be really cute. So, give it up for green projectile vomiting. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. It's over. Woo! Hey, hey. It's probably encouraging people, yeah. I think some bars charge a little bit more on St. Patrick's Day. It's called variable pricing. Damn, whatever you got away with it. Ah, give me another green beer. Well, the excitement in the news, the alternative to the alternative music festival. South by Southwest, fuckers. Hey. Ah, uh, whoa, what is it good for? Why don't we buy out South by Southwest? Brought to you by the U.S. Army! South by West, Southwest! Sue Alternative said... If I can pronounce alternative... <laughs> are you alternative? Alternative to the alternative! I've already walked a couple of people, thank you for walking. <laughs> uh, there aren't that many people to walk, so I probably won't Woo! walk. I, I, I have passed some records walking people <laughs> when there's a crowd, but... When there's not a crowd, I don't walk too many people for some reason. It's just numbers, numbers, numbers. So, yeah, so give it up for more South by Southwest. And luckily, some of the glamour, I, could, I don't think there's any more glamour rock and roll. Is that glam? That must have been a couple of uh, decades ago, at least. Uh, but a uh, hundred, uh, more than a hundred uh, musical acts uh, uh, went through their support for war. Give it up by South by Southwest. Brought you by Raytheon and all the war industry profiteers. Ah, uh, there'll be another bomb for Baghdad. Uh, that was last year's, uh, uh, it was last year. Or about, uh, it's still going on actually, Baghdad. I got a case of American Lecture. Uh, show uh, Baghdad was still there and they'll drop a bomb. And say, we're doing it up for you. We're dropping it in Iran. But uh, yes, this is your chance. So I got my invitation in the mail. Uh, a very important event, uh, I think. It uh, probably doesn't matter a whole lot. Uh, but it was my invitation. There is a, a primary election, if you've ever heard of that. We had this very important race uh, between, be, between uh, two elderly gentlemen with, who had memory problems. And, and money problems, uh, not money problems, more problems. Uh, and, and just a mess. But, and your vote won't make a difference, but it's April 2nd, get ready for it. And I got mine in the snail mail production. Uh, they still, the mail man still loves you. Uh, he will deliver it. He will put it in your box with love and pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Mailman. So, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, anybody ever hear of the landline? Yeah. They pulled my landline recently. I'm reconnected though with uh, uh, AT&T and Verizon and what happened, my landline, uh, it, it just didn't give me a dial code, I was just getting a farting sound from my, my landline. It wasn't coming through for me. So I decided, I have an old phone from the days of 9-11. I, uh, I, I had to buy a phone to get an unemployment, a touch tone, it was a state of the art phone at the time. And so I thought it was my phone. I couldn't find it. Uh, uh, one of those replacing a landline phone. Best Buy didn't. They didn't have one. They had. They told me the landline section is here, and, but they were 113 out dollars. These landline phones, and it was a cordless phone, actually with a cell phone. But actually, so it was a negative experience with Best Buy. But it was Ace Hardware. When everyone around you need a problem solved, when you need lubrication. Go to Ace Hardware, and that's where I found my my lovely landline replacement phone. And my phone did come back on. Evidently, somebody else in the neighborhood's phone was I think it was a, the drug clinic next door to me. They're very well run, and they're a little overweight because they gave up uh, gave up drugs for food. Uh, you know, that's one way to go. And then in my backyard, I read Square and started terrification in the East Village, and they recently sold it uh, for hundred million dollars. So. But I think it was uh, the, one of the two, they had their phone go out, and so the, the phone man fixed my phone, and he fixed the drug rehab 
living and working center next door to my name. Uh, and they're very friendly people. And uh, so, have I I've run out five minutes yet? Uh, Hello? Anybody home? <laughs> Anybody here? Are you all asleep? Uh, I think I still have time then. Uh, just tell me, uh, tell me when I'm, uh, give me the, uh, Maybe one I think it's, a, I don't know what color your light is these days, but uh, I'll notice it when I see it. Oh, these psychedelic lights, uh, it's psychedelic, uh, oh, it's a green light for St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> for Earth Day. Go green, everybody, enjoy it. I'll stick it in with a plastic bag, if I can find the hole. Oh, <laughs> uh, almost. I'm here, consummating the act. <laughs> Woo! Consummating the act, still wearing the mask, telling the truth about South by Southwest and their fucking support Raytheon and they're supporting all the evil and the occupation, the genocide. And are you playing South by Southwest? John King, you should go down there. You should go. That's true. You're right. You're absolutely right. Fuck the car culture. Fuck the Teslas. Fuck the Teslas. I'm with you. The legend, John King, we love you. All right. Kirk Windsor, I'm not sure if you're here, but you're on deck. Or Andre Sondra Hills, I'm not sure if you're here either, but we have some people that are going to perform. They're going to be great. But first, okay, this is a very special night and a very special performer. We're very stoked. I mean, in the... The Mount Everest of comedy, one of the peaks, I would say, maybe the peak, is The Tonight Show. It's a legendary franchise, it can make your career, and it can ordain you. All the greats, all the greats have passed through. I mean, it's Jimmy Fallon, so it is what it is, but at least it's not Jimmy Kimmel. This next comedian has got an audition, and it's, very, it's looking good. They have an audition for The Tonight Show at Rockefeller Center. We've got them here tonight. It's an exclusive. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the king of comedy, Jason King. Give it up for Jason King. Hey, guys. What's going on? What's up? Actually, could I use this one? Yeah. Could I use this? Um, let me... Uh... I'm sorry. I'm making things complicated. This is my fault. Hello, guys. How are you? I feel like you're very confused. You're like, what's going on? <laughs> Try it now. How's that? Oh, wait, there's a switch, right? I think it's on. Is it on? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can we turn it yeah. higher? Yeah. Can we make it higher? All right. Fantastic. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Woo. All right. Yeah, hey, guys, give it up for yourselves. Make some more noise again. Nice stuff. Yeah, man, I might be a fucking correspondent. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, my Monday nights are going to be very different. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. I, um, what do I want to talk about? Um, let's see, I was dating a, a bisexual girl recently, and I was, I was thinking to myself, um, you know, I was like, if she cheats on me, I really hope that she cheats on me with a man. <laughs> you know, because I, I really like home records that I can hit. <laughs> You know, like I, like, I hope that they're at least like a she they. Yeah. <laughs> People be like, you hit a girl? I'm like, did I? <laughs> I think that you're disrespecting them. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, let's see. A lot of times, uh, I, I, I feel like people have felt this before. Like, my ex used to say, oh, I had a dream that you cheated on me. Oh. Right? You had this? You've seen this before? Yeah, my ex used to tell me, he's like, oh, I had a dream that you cheated on me. And I'm like, I don't know why, why, why my ex is wasting so much time dreaming about that when she could be like me and dreaming about having sex with other people. <laughs> you know, like she's dreaming about me cheating. I'm dreaming about fucking both of her sisters. <laughs> I think she needs to learn how to dream up a better time. <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> see what else. Uh, other thing my ex used to do a lot, she would ask me a lot of conditional questions like, would you love me if I was fat? Would you love me if I was a worm? Would I love you if you were 500 pounds? Yes, but you'd be on thin ice. <laughs> At any point in time, you could fall right through. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I have like there's a there's a 
there's a threshold for passive aggressiveness that I'm willing to accept based on how attractive you are. And I'm not taking your current level of passive aggressiveness from a walrus. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it. That's mean. I'm sorry. But there is, there is like you know, there's something that pretty buys you a lot of shit. You know what I mean? Like I'll be at a club. And I'll like see, you know, some girls across the club, you know, and I'm like, damn, they're so fucking annoying. And I'll be mimicking, I was like, ah, you know. And then I'll turn to my friends, I'm like, all right, let's try to go fuck these girls. <laughs> you know, I mean, it pretty buys you a lot. Like, try, uh, I want a bunch of hot women to like skip a line and try to try to sneak into a club wearing fat suits. You know, see if see if the, the bouncer loves you then. I. <laughs> I don't know. The only people who have true unconditional love are ugly people. <laughs> you know? Because you, you're like, would you? They're like, would you love me if I had no arms? Like, I love you when you had no teeth. I. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna cut out the middle. I'll fix that joke. All right, cool. That's great. I. Uh, oh man, what the fuck does this say? Oh, I feel like guys get a lot of shit when they get successful. They like, uh, like leave their girl or whatever. You know what I mean? I, I, I feel like that's something like we've like grown accustomed to. You know? I feel like like when I was in in grade school, like I would, I like change my crushes all the time. Right? I went from Beyonce to Jessica Alba to to Megan Fox as soon as that Transformers movie came out. You know? <laughs> you know? Like I was I was broke in eleven, and I already went from a black woman to a white woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, here's the thought. You guys ever think about how happy some slave owners were when they lost their slaves, but then realized that their fields were full of oil? <laughs> right? They're like, ah, oh, goddamn it! Oh, this is great. <laughs> I'm still gonna be rich. I found, I found the true black gold. Uh, that's kind of an interesting thing. Everything about it, it's all like when you like even if you didn't have an oil field, you think about how ridiculous it was that they were upset. They're like, they lost their slaves. They're like, oh no, now all I have is this field full of sellable resources. What am I gonna do? All right, this is more smart than it is funny. Um, it's, it's not. It's okay. No, I can tell. Well, thank you. Well, you know, I know there's only eight of them, but people, people just laugh differently. You could, you know, the longer you do comedy, the more you can tell. You can tell a lot of stuff. You can tell whether you're doing well in the bathroom. You can tell whether people are laughing at you. Yeah, you know, that's kind of funny. When someone's laughing at you, they'll be like, <laughs> I'm like, nigga, I'm, I'm performing. Don't I want you to laugh? Clearly, you're laughing at something you don't want me to know about. <laughs> you're covering your mouth when you laugh. Oh man, uh, let's see. Oh, this happened recently. Um, uh, a hillbilly uh, threatened to shoot me the other day. Yeah, I almost got shot in traffic. And then I, I, I told myself, I was like, hey Jason, you know, uh, you know, just lift your chin up, get back to work. And I was like, why is this my life? You ever think about, like, some people just have major inconveniences that they just, do, and then they just go back to work, you know? Like, I, I'll drive to work, I get pulled over, a cop will, like, put me on the hood of a car, and then I'll have to go back to bag of groceries. What, <laughs> what kind of bullshit is that? Like, a, gr a girl will leave her job, she have to, like, outrun an assailant, and then go back to waiting tables. That's crazy. Some people have some serious things that they have to go through on a daily basis. It's fucking trash, man. Pretty trash. Um, all right, well, I have not much more to say, so let me end this on a good note. What do you guys want to hear me talk about? Or just hear about? It doesn't have to be me. It could also just not be me. Uh, huh? Inflation. You want to hear about inflation? Yeah. Oh, here's a thought. Have you guys, ever, have you guys done your taxes and then realize how, how, like, how, like, could you, like, see inflation happening before your eyes? <laughs> I was going through my expenses. I was like, God. Damn it, KGB room, how much more of these drinks cost? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are killing me, man. Oh, man. All right, let's see. I'll, just, I'll say this and get out of here. Um, here's a thought. I feel like R&B singers oftentimes 
will like sing about uh, like how long they're gonna have sex. <laughs> right. But I, I doubt that all these R&B singers have that good of stamina. Right? I just think that a lot of things rhyme with till the break of dawn. <laughs> You ever think that they're like in a bed with a girl and she's just like, you know, she, she, you know, they just have trouble like meeting the expectations of their songs? You know, some girl's in bed with them, she's like, what happened, Akon? I thought you were gonna smack that. I don't have to wait an hour for your bag to kick in, I thought you were gonna hit it right now, now, now. Guess to make a new song, it's like, I wanna love you, but my endurance is low. Alright, it's my time, hey you guys, give it up for Matt. The genius, the legend, the man with the plan, the man with the suits, and the vests, and the ties, the Weezer fan himself, only in dreams, only in dreams, the buddy to my Holly. Give it up for Matt Parker. Wow. Thank you. That was special. That was... Where am I? Where am I going? Okay, let's go. No, I'm just kidding. It's comedy hour, everybody. Get ready to laugh, okay? At midnight, this place turns into yuck yuck, so be prepared. No, uh, that was very special for me. Thank you, Jason King. I never get introduced, so <laughs> it, means, it means a lot to hear it the other way. That's fantastic. I loved it. I wish I could, yeah. Thank, give it up for Jason King, everybody. I got practice. Brilliant, brilliant comedy mind. You're going to be hearing a, 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 a cultural leader, a true influencer. You're going to be hearing a lot, I predict. I predict big things. All right, we have some amazing acts. I'm not sure who is here. We're just going to do a little. Is Kirk Windsor here? Kirk, you're done. You're off the list. All right, how about Andreas Sonder Hills? Okay, how about Eli Ruffer? Eli Ruffer, Nathan Aberg. Okay, we're gonna have Josh Bloom on deck. Josh Bloom is gonna be on deck. Can we get Brian Nguyen up to? Uh, do you want to? You want to read something for us? Yeah, give it up for Brian, everybody. An excellent uh, poet writer, and uh, we're so good. Have them back. Oh, oh. Alright, I'm gonna level with you guys. I'm reading poetry, but I'm gonna level with you. I have a reading on April 4th, and I'm like kind of fucked, because like, the story is, is kind of like this. I like that there's not a lot of people here, because this is like, kind of like embarrassing. I went to like an open mic for the first time in like five years, and then like, like I just read some stuff, and like people liked it, and then... A couple weeks later, the host of the open mic is like, hey, do you want to be featured in, like, as the featured reader? And I was like, oh yeah, I'll do that. But now it's like, been a couple weeks, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to read, because like, I have like one good poem. So <laughs> I'm going to read a bunch of stuff that I like haven't read like out loud really before. Like One of these I've read out loud. So we're going like, to test how that is. I'm like, kind of using all those like, guinea pigs to like, test my shit like, respectfully. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> This is a poem I wrote about a person that I used to see, which is kind of cringe, but like, you know, like, that shit happens. Uh, grave robber. Still grieving, I give her a chance to come back to life. I bury myself haphazardly into the hymns of a god who let this happen. Loss must be a victimless force, I tell myself. The fangs of a wolf can break down a rabbit's skull like bread to pull apart and dole out just enough iron to cleanse the palate. Again, the moon fails to reflect, but crimsons the most vital part of the chest, sloughing off the most important ways to cope with loss. I continue to do. Alright, thank you. Y'all don't have to clap. It's like, I mean, it's chill. You can snap if that makes us feel good. Yeah. I like, I like snapping, it makes me feel pretentious. I'm gonna like, oh, uh, read another one. It's like a love poem, but like, kind of, but like, not really. Uh, 
Also, like, do people like when, like, people just, like, talk about the poem before they read it? Or, like, no, like, I'm asking genuinely. Or should I just, like, go into it? All right, word. I like, I like that, thank you. The butterflies in my stomach have evolved. I will fall in love with you too late. And I will let you linger too long in the mind. The pull, the pulse, the unrelenting coil of hands furling into the broad of my back. The soft of your cheeks cresting the eyeline, dutifully and inevitably retreating. I am flush with memory, unlacing the knot of fingers, the first, the second. Severing soul from sinew, I retrace the lines of promise to discover you have already grown wings. Thank you. Ooh, it snaps. Okay. Yeah. And um, this last one's a little... Words are hard. <laughs> um, this last one, it's all right. I don't know. I'm trying to like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I choose to believe the morning too chilly, the air too sacred, a ceremony like brunch. Again, I'm still too tense beneath my still wintered fingers, perpending your sweater like a canary, discovering bread, hornets, honey, humans, their own radiating warmth. Would you believe the warmth enough for water, life, to condensate against this clear through glass? Would you believe the presence of sun still there, even as the sky grays from beyond your periphery? I vivisect belief and weigh the parts be and lie, forgetting how to spell feel it. But then I take your hand as if I never have and I never really have. And I begin to believe again in honey, bread, in the simple pull of a sleeve and the warmth of an April morning. All right, and that's all I've got for you. Thank you. Woo! Fantastic. Amazing. Give it up for Brian. Yeah. Beautiful. I get, I get, I get, you, yeah, it's featured. Absolutely. You have a beautiful poetry voice. Beautiful poetry reading. Amazing. Give it up for Brian one more time, everybody. Fantastic. Okay, I wrote a book, one year, one line every day for a year. March 8th, that's right, thank you. <laughs> March 18th, it's a long poem. It's all one long poem. Cigarette cut out of a valentine. That's how it is. All right. <laughs> it's all like that. All right, so we have Adi OK, you were on deck. Lawrence Reese, after that, Miles Toe, Danny Fallon, I'm not sure if Joe Levy is here. Avi Dio, Gabriel Casado. I'm not sure if you're here either. That's gonna do it. So we just have a few left. Thank you guys for sticking around. We're gonna have some fun. I love it. And stay tuned for our year and a half finale. All right, let's get the hilarious Josh Bloom. Give it up for Josh Bloom, everybody. Yeah. Let's get some comedy from Josh. Is this cool or do you want to uh, I think I'm good with this one. Okay, cool. I like, the, I like the whole of my microphones. Yes. Yeah. You know what, man? Woo! I like the fact that everybody left before I came up. Oh, yeah? Fuck yeah, dude. Y'all get a, an exclusive VIP Woo! performance right off of yourselves, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I like that there's a microphone here that remembers what segregation was like. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> If I say the N-word in this thing, it's gonna grow three times its size. I gotta, I gotta fucking keep away from this. I wanna, I wanna feed the power within. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. So uh, I did a lot of dating recently, but I kind of cut back on it. You know, I was having fun in the dates, but I felt like it wasn't really going anywhere. I wasn't really connecting with these women. Yeah. You know? But I, I feel. Like
like it's not entirely my fault. I, I, I had a bit of a weird relationship the last time I was dating seriously. The, uh, the person I was dating, English wasn't her first language. Yeah, we actually spoke Portuguese with each other most of the time. And the uh, fellas, if you ever feel the urge to pull out a dictionary in the middle of an argument, you're about to lose that fucking argument, okay? She's never gonna respect you if you have to Google how to ask for respect, conjugations. Uh, you don't wanna fuck around, accidentally use a polite form of, please shut up, bitch. Uh, por favor, don't fuck yourself. You don't wanna, you don't wanna send mixed messages, you know? Yeah. I honestly felt that at times when we were arguing, man. I honestly felt like I wanted to pull a dictionary out, but I couldn't do that. It would have been humiliating, you know? So I would just be against, like, like imagine how bad that shit would be. If I was arguing with my ex-girlfriend against the wall, she was coming at me like, Hey, por que você não quer jantar com a minha família, eh? Você não quer jantar com meu pai e com minha irmã? And I'm just like, oh yeah? Well, I was gonna deal with your father if he wasn't such a, such a, Hey, yo, give me a second. Okay. Yeah. If he wasn't such a puta, yeah, I brought my notes to this exam. Yeah, now what? Como se dice? Fuck, I look like. <laughs> yeah, do a lingo that, bitch. Would have been pandemonium, dude. Yeah? Would have gotten broken up with immediately, huh? Yeah, I, I was using the apps. Wasn't a big fan of them, you know? I feel like I kept. Going out with women that like I just didn't get along with, you know? And I would get my hopes up because I would match with different women than the ones I would eventually go out with. Because that's how it works, right? Like I'll match with like a a volleyball playing med student whose high school superlative was most improved titties. <laughs> but then I end up going out with a woman who believes she's a witch. I was like, oh, you're a witch, huh? How about you bring back the woman who ghosted me from the fucking dead, dude? How's that sound to you? I don't know, man. I don't know what it is about me that was attracting these women to me. I feel like I was just giving off the wrong vibe for some reason. Yeah. You know what I don't think was helping? I think it was these glasses. I think I gotta get rid of these. I keep thinking about it. Because huh? I got I got contacts, but I don't really use them, you know? Yeah. Like, I think... I think there's just something about the way that these mix with the rest of my outfit. Like, I think some women just only saw like a, like a what do you call it? Like a bisexual web designer. You know? <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Like, women, they came to me for support, but only tech support. <laughs> Man, you know how much it sucks when you're trying to give a woman the D, and all she wants is your C++, man? Get the fuck out of here, yeah? If you understood that last joke, I need a job reference. <laughs> I will suck you off or eat you out for a job. Damn. Yeah, man. <laughs> let's, uh, let's really get down to business here. Uh, my parents my parents are divorced. We got any of the broken homes in the building? Let me hear you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's fucking compare some numbers here. When, when did your parents divorce? Thirteen. Thirteen. Ooh, that's tough, man. Yeah, it was even worse for me. My parents got divorced at twenty-six. Oh, the scars, man. Because here's the thing: like, I grew up thinking that a marriage was just two people who fucking hated each other, right? Yeah, dude. That's how it was. I mean, I can tell even as a kid they hated each other. You know, like the fact that I'm standing here on the stage talking to you guys is the only proof I have. That they ever fucked even once, dude. Right. I'm just a walking broken condom, bro. Yeah. Honestly. And I know I was broken because my mom was pregnant in her wedding dress. <laughs> Don't mean to get personal up here, you know. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I feel like they just met at the wrong time, you know? That does happen to couples, right? They meet at the wrong time. I figure that's just what happens when my parents, right? An interracial couple. <laughs> Start dating during the O.J. Simpson trial? I feel like it sets some bad vibes, you know? I feel like at least that explains why my dad had to sell his car, right? Like, he was probably scaring all the hoes with that white Ford Bronco. Yeah, man. Just pursuing them very slowly. But they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't uh, reciprocate, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, my dad is Italian and Jewish. My mom is black. Uh, I feel like one of the weird consequences of having a parent that's not the same race as you is that people don't immediately realize that you guys are related sometimes, right? Like, uh, when I was a little kid, my dad was pushing me around a grocery cart and I was asleep in the cart. And this lady came up to him and accused him of stealing a little black boy. 
And I'm just like, lady, you're about 400 years too late for that shit. You, know what I'm like, you should have talked that shit when the British were coming. Bitch, I know. <laughs> when you're getting all fucking tough now, like, like you're gonna see a red coat one day and be like, hey, yo, my musket finger itching. <laughs> nah, don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, my grandma didn't make it any better, right? My grandma on my dad's side of the family, for the longest time, she wouldn't even speak to my mother. And a lot of people in the family thought it was because she was racist. But when I was born, everything kind of changed, you know? So I, I try to see things from a perspective, you know? Like, you gotta remember how old this woman was. She had to be old enough to remember when black people were invented, you know? Like, <laughs> she beta tested melanin. You gotta give her a break, man. No, seriously, dude, like, she was born in 1908. BC, before colors? That yeah, was a different time, it was a different time. And then, how, how long am I in right now? Uh, maybe one more minute. I one more minute? Okay, one more joke. Uh, Sorry. So, uh, I, I recently got a job in New York. Yeah, recently got a job here. I'm enjoying yeah. it. I don't, I don't live here yet, but I come back and forth between here and uh, DC, where I'm from. Oh. Yeah, I used to come here a lot to uh, do comedy. I gotta say, being in New York really shows what the disparities in the entertainment industry are like, right? Because, like, if you're a comedian at, like, a, like a John Mulaney or a Kevin Hart level, what is it like when you come to New York? You know, you fucking, you stay at the Ritz-Carlton, you perform in a stadium, you get shepherded around in a stretch limo to protect you from your adoring fans. When you're a comedian at my level, the limo is your car, <laughs> and the hotel is your car. <laughs> All right, that's it for me. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Woo. yeah. Woo. Hell yeah. Give it up for Josh Bloom, everybody. Woo. My God, that was hilarious. You you live in D.C. right now? Yeah. You how often do you come up? Every week. We'll definitely come back. I'll, I, I will get you on earlier next time. We sign up for next week. Everybody I know, you sign up early, but that was hilarious. Thank Give it up one more time for Josh Bloom, everybody. Woo. That was funny as hell. Uh, amazing. Yeah, we have great comedians. Uh, we're very lucky. Some of the talent we have left, really hilarious. I'm ready to laugh. We have Lawrence Reese on deck. We have Miles Toe coming up after that. Danny Fallon, Joe Levy, I think is going to close us out. I think that is everybody. Yeah. Godspeed. All right. Well, thank you for sticking around. I'm very stoked about this next comedian. We love having him out. Give it up. You know him. You love him. Give it up for Adi OK, everybody. Whoa. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, go for it. Can't even work a bike. When you get to my level in comedy, you get booed on stage. Nice. That's... Well done. Yeah. When you get to my level in comedy, you do a Rubik's Cube on stage. What was that? Yeah. Now, now, now we're talking. Pass it over when you're done. Right, I'll figure it out later. Uh, <laughs> this guy's got it. I'm Jewish. Ooh. How Jewish am I? <laughs> I'm so Jewish, my friend dropped a quarter and I said, pick it up before I do. Uh, um, happy St. Patrick's Day. Woo! You guys all celebrate St. Patrick's Day? Yeah. yeah. Do you guys know who St. Patrick is? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you guys shouldn't have celebrated St. Patrick's Day. That's, uh, that's how you do comedy, guys. <laughs> Get that fucking shitty mic away from me, dude. Uh, I've uh, been trying to make new friends in New York City. Hey, hey. <laughs> I was saying, I'm trying to make new friends. I'm trying to make new friends. I feel like it's hard making friends in New York City unless you feel comfortable talking to somebody while they're walking away from you. I, um, I went up to this dude who was on his phone. I was like, hey, what's up, man? He was on his phone. He was just like, fuck off. And then just walked away. I was like, that checks out. That's. 
guys, I'm going to let you know right now, I shoot it straight. I don't beat around the bush. I beat right on it. By the time I'm done with that bush, you won't see a bush. That's a cum joke. I don't like to explain my jokes. So I knew you guys were already laughing. That might come. Now my friend the other day said he had to come clean. I was like, yeah, dude, knock it off with this filthy cum, man. <laughs> These aren't prescription. Uh, I, um... Yeah. Work at a coffee shop. And, um work as a barista. I walked in on somebody getting a blowjob at my job the other day. And that was a that was a mind that was an eye-opening experience, you know. I don't know if anybody has encountered this, but uh, what happened was I was knocking on the door, nobody answered, so then I opened the door and I see this guy getting blown. And he was just like, oh shit, sorry man, and he starts pulling up his pants, and I just go, it's fine, just finish. And I close the door. <laughs> because I don't know if you, what you guys have pictured, you know, like, when that happens. But I could have just been like, oh, is three a crowd? You know what I mean? I could have just been like, are we not taking turns in here, guys? You know? So I had to like fucking wait outside for the next five minutes. I'm waiting outside for these... This guy get blown. And then the door opens and the girl comes out of the bathroom and she just goes and walks away like fucking business as usual. Dude. The guy comes out immediately after, zips up his zipper, gives me the head nod like it's fucking clear in there. It wasn't. He double dumped, guys. He double dumped. It looked like a skunk was stuck in the toilet. Yeah. Uh. Happy Women's History Month. Uh. I, uh... I don't know, man. Somebody said I was delusional the other day. Yeah, when the fuck has that ever been a problem? Exactly, yeah. Last I checked, all of America is delusional, guys. Mm. I don't know if any of you have noticed, but nobody in China is buying our shits right now, okay? Speak on it. None of our kids in our public or private schools can knit a sweater, let alone 20 in a day, all right? We're not fucking shit, dude. Give it up for the bathtub in the back. Woo! Yeah. I want to be in that right now. Soaking. Um, <sighs> feels good up here. It's been a long day. This weather is fucking nuts. This weather is fucking nuts. I was wearing a fucking crop top yesterday. Now I gotta come outside with my fucking fingerless gloves and trench coat again. What the fuck is happening, guys? My Jews in the crowd, what the fuck is going on right now? Joe. <laughs> We're having fun. Uh, I, um... Used to jerk off a lot. Just jerk off. Used to put a sock on it. Yeah. Used to jerk off into a sock. I don't do it anymore though, I just go straight for the drawer now. You know, I try to get them all at once. One sock at a time my ass, you know what I mean? Yeah, shut up and pay attention to me. I got a minute left, I just got the light. Comedy. I, uh, 
I used to have this one friend down south who uh, always needed to know the relationships I was in. You, you ever have that friend that's like so nosy they need to know every relationship you're in? My one friend, he was so no he needed to know all the relationships he, I was in. He needed to know who my main bitch was, who my <laughs> side bitch was. He asked me who my D.O.B. was. I was like, what's a D.O.B.? He goes, dusty old bitch. <laughs> I go, what's a dusty old bitch? He goes, Man, what about that 50-year-old you were hooking up with? That's a dusty old bitch. I was like, bro, that's my main bitch. Don't be talking about my main bitch like that, bro. Been dusting that broad off for years. All right, give it up for your host. You guys have been amazing. Yeah. Thank you for having me. You guys are awesome. Yeah. 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 We all learned something new today. D.O.B. Dusty old bitch. D.O.B. Old dirty ba O.D.B. Old dirty bastard. D.O.B. Dusty old bitch. Everybody's got one. You know you've got it in the rotation, the roster. You know it. It's a relatable material. Oh my god. Hilarious. That was funny as hell. Adio K. Killing it, killing it, killing it on the classic, on the Adil K microphone. I mean, it's his, it's the honorary Adil yeah. K. Uh, yeah, uh, retro, uh, pre -sigger. what was it, pre-civil rights uh, <laughs> microphone. We have hilarious, hilarious, just a couple left, Miles Toe on deck, Danny Fallon coming up, and Joe Levy, the great Joe Levy, closing us out. This next comedian, one of my favorites, hilarious, ladies and gentlemen, say no more, it's Lawrence Reese. Yeah. How y'all doing? Good for your host yeah. more time, man. Yeah. Doing great, Larry. Thanks for asking. I, did, I, did, I didn't ask. I didn't ask. I didn't ask. I didn't ask. Anybody here got kids? That's good. <laughs> good thing, yeah, y'all have no kids. Man. Too late to have kids. I don't have no kids, man. I don't, but I think about adopting kids sometimes. But I feel like it'd be too much pressure for that kid if I was adopting them. I'm gonna treat it like an NBA contract. You got 10 days to impress me, nigga. <laughs> I'm gonna go to that fucking adoption service. I'm gonna take you, and I'm gonna take you home. If you don't show me that you can fly in 10 days, <laughs> nigga, you going back to where you was at. I'm taking you and your receipt. That car ride back and be sad as shit. You like, yo, Papa. I'm like, don't call me that. <laughs> where we going? I'm like, who do you mean we? <laughs> you going back to the pound. <laughs> you going back to where your parents should have, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. It's not even that dark of a joke, it could be a lot worse. <laughs> it gets worse, man. Like, that's weird, ain't that crazy how you can adopt a kid that looks, like, how, I, I got homies that would never take care of a kid who bitch they hooking up. Imagine like having that much courage in your apparent ability to take care of a kid that's used. <laughs> like adopting a kid is a used child. That is a child that's been beaten, destroyed, hurt, everything and you're like yo i can raise him I'm like no, no i know i can't i'm gonna make him a lot worse i'm like nigga i'm at first question have you done cocaine <laughs> no all right let's get to it playboy <laughs> let's get it <laughs> i got a lot of friends to meet Shit. what's the what's the oldest age you would adopt that like, what's the what's the cutoff age that you would adopt a child at like 18? <laughs> you gonna get a grown ass man? Does Ramy have a grown That's when you sleep with a gun. You don't know this nigga that much. You gotta sleep with a gun with an 18 year old in hell. I think the oldest I would go up to is like 10. Cause I feel like that's the age where like it matters to be raised. If he's like five, like, oh, I can teach this little nigga. 10 years old, I'm like, all right, he been in jail already. You gonna have to talk about this. <laughs> and actually, I have a question. And so, would you rather? Would you rather be in a a shootout with a blind person or a fight with a deaf person? That shit tough, right? <laughs> and the fight is to the death, so you you're gonna die either way. What about you? Shootout with a blind person. Really? You wanna you want this nigga <laughs> helping you out in a shootout? 
You can, he can hear you, but he don't know where he going. He might be shooting at you. You don't even know it. That's a hard choice about you. What would you say? Blind. Really? You going yeah. with the blind person that shoot out too? <laughs> so you guys don't like deaf people? That's, that's, that's it? No, I just, I'd rather get shot. You'd rather get shot yeah. than... That's the dumbest <laughs> answer ever. You said I'm gonna die either way. I'd rather, I'd rather lose a fight and die than get shot. Well, that's where we differ. That is, apparently. You like some needles, huh? No. I don't know, man. Let me see what else. Um, I've, I've been... There's a, there's, a, there's a recent death I've been a fan of. This is a, a weird way of saying it. Like, I, I'm not saying I'm happy he died. I just want to know why nobody else cares that he died. Y'all seen the CEO of Cash App was, was murdered in real life? It was the CEO of Cash App and he got stabbed to death in I think California. I don't remember the last time I heard a CEO getting stabbed. I don't. I don't. Did, did the colonel get stabbed? Nigga, I don't know. I never heard a CEO just get stabbed to death in real life. And the craziest part about it is this is why I think it's a setup. It's because the day he died, the next day they dropped the new money using app. So like, it felt like Venmo set that nigga up. Like, I think Venmo and Apple Pay was like, yo, we going. Somebody need to take back the hood. Like, I'm not. This Cash App is on some weird shit. Cash App. That's the hood's favorite app. That's why Memo and Apple was jealous. I never heard a hood nigga like, yo, what's your Apple pay? They be like, what's your cash app? Never, I ask, I work mad jobs that's random. They never say, what's your Venmo? They say, what's your cash app? Now you can't say that no more and be happy. He got killed in real time. He's a white dude with an Asian name. That was the funniest part to me. I thought he was Asian. They said Peter Wong. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Damn. And they said, yeah, he's from Calabasas. I'm like, what? He <laughs> said, white nigga, man. Dude got stabbed coming from an ATM. You own a money app and you going to an ATM? How <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fuck that make any sense? You got unlimited money. You're like, yo, I gotta check my balance. No, nigga. Have someone else do that for you. Something else. Um, did y'all see uh, recently the dude that was fighting for against Jew versus Palestine that set on fire? You saw that shit? He set himself on fire and like, talking about free Palestine. He left a message. White dude doing white shit. You know, no black person gonna set himself on fire for a movement. He's a white dude. He set himself on fire and said, Free Palestine. I cannot live no longer seeing his death. They said he said free Palestine, but all I heard was ow. This shit hot. <laughs> Should have did the old fashioned way. Should have jumped off a building. Free Palestine. <laughs> <laughs> it was really fun, but you didn't like this nigga committed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nigga jumped off a building. Y'all still feel bad for people that ki that kill themselves? You still like when I was in high school, if you if you committed suicide, you was a bitch. <laughs> That's how we felt. But like, you you gonna kill yourself, nigga? Nigga, let me do that. <laughs> but then I was thinking, cause we used to be like, "That's some gay shit. If you kill yourself." But we also thought everything was gay, like everything. Like we was afraid to wear shorts too low. <laughs> cause that's some gay shit. Now nah, that's my favorite type of shorts. <laughs> But like we thought everything was the type of gay, so, you know, like, killing yourself is gay. Now I started getting older, like, killing yourself is the straightest thing you could do. But just any man is going to take me out. It's going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be me to kill myself. I don't, I don't, I feel like it's, it's true. <laughs> like, I see that shit on Twitter one time, this girl's like, how you, you know, if you kill yourself, you gay, how you let another man take your breath away? That's crazy. <laughs> I was like, that's a good point, bitch. <laughs> I heard the laugh. That was funny. I, was no, 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 no. I don't trust you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope you're dead. You know? <laughs> yeah, seriously gay. 
Yeah. How much time do I have? Like a minute? A minute, yeah. Okay, let's see. Let's see if I got one more left. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody here ever been in detention? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Uh, yeah, yeah. you're coming up soon. You'll be in detention. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's my time. Give your host a mouth, Hell please. Yeah. yeah. Woo! Cool. Hilarious as always. Oh my God! And truthful, the Cash App, they're blowing the, all the. I, I read a piece at the beginning about the whistleblower, the Boeing whistleblower. Okay, it's all on TikTok. They're trying to shut it down. They're, they don't want us. They don't want us to know. They don't want us to confer. Hilarious. Give it up one more time for Lawrence Reese, everybody. One of the funniest guys in the business. All right. Speaking of hilarious, we have we have all all of the funniest comedians in New York. I can't believe the talent. We're so lucky here in the midnight hour on Monday night, the uh, the all-star fucking list. All right, so we have Danny Fallon on deck. We have Joe Levy closing us out. Let's get Miles Toe up, everybody. Yeah. Give it up for Miles Toe. Yeah. 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 Yes. yes. That's my what? That's my Can you get off the fucking stage? <laughs> you narcissist. Yeah. It's not always about you. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Left this shit on here so we can come back up here. What up, fellas and you. ladies? Huh? You say? I was just checking I knew your name. <laughs> All right, Jew. Chill out. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Everyone good? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling very uh, chaotic today. I'm just going to tell a story. <laughs> sorry, I, was, I didn't like that. That was, that was rude. Sorry. Um, I just, just want to tell a story. I, I, don't, I don't have the material written down, so I'm just going to tell it out loud. I just want to tell a story about the first time I went to a sex party. That's that's my my story. Um, I live in Brooklyn, so to sign a lease in Brooklyn, you have to go to at least one sex party. That's a fact. It's like a, it's a Bushwick thing. You have to be poly, join a sex party. It's a whole thing. First time I went to a sex party, it was in Brooklyn, and um, I was freaked out. I'm not gonna lie. I went with my white friends. Apparently, that's what you do. I don't know. I don't know these things. I didn't know. So when I, when I get there, I, I look at the bouncer, also a young black man, and I ask him, hey, wh what's this all about? But I didn't say that. I, I, gave, him the, I gave him the look. You know, you know the look when you look at someone and you're like, am I going to die? But like not like a, I go like, is this good? And I kept, is this good? Is this good? Is this good? I kept getting that look. And he was like, it's not good. It's not great. But you have a good time. Right? So I went to this thing called a, a bottomless party. Right? It's, it's exactly what you think. Uh, you, you show up there. Pants off, all right? Right, it's a pants off thing. But I'm not a pants off guy, you know? So when I got there, they were like, hey man, you can't go into this party unless you take your pants off. But I'm still a black dude, six foot black dude. So I was in a party wearing Air Jordan socks, no pants, and a hoodie. I look crazy, you know what I'm saying? Like I look like I sold crack in Harlem. I look like a fucking maniac, all right? Here's the thing that got me freaked out, right? There was a hot tub, very cool. Right? Actually, no. So let's we'll save that part. Right? Everyone thinks it's like a sex party, right? What do you think about a sex party? You think it's like all girls get naked. And that's exactly what it was. It was all girls, giant, beautiful breasts, a lot of squirting. It was all dudes. It was all, you know, regular girls. And it was great. You know, it was a fun time. I highly recommend it. All dicks. I probably recommend it. You guys should go. It was actually one of the coolest thing I ever done. Pretty gay. And it was awesome. I loved it. Pretty much the greatest thing ever. Here's the thing that got me a little twisted up, okay? There was a hot tub in the back of the sex party. It's a hot tub. And you would think, beautiful girls in the hot tub. No, this is the only thing in the hot tub. And I, I say this respectfully, um, there was a retard in the hot tub. And this is a real fact, okay? And I don't want to say this. I don't mean this in a bad way. But there was an actual Down Syndrome person in the hot tub. Now, I, I get I get that uh, they could be anywhere. They, 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 can, they can work. They can have jobs. Shouldn't be at sex parties, I'll be honest with you, right? <laughs> they need a handler to cross the street, but they don't need a handler to be here. That's a problem. I, it's, I don't understand why that... It's, I don't want to be worried about this, but I feel like sex party is the least <laughs> appropriate place for someone with Down syndrome to be. I'll say this. You had the biggest dick in the room. Let's be honest. He, the, he didn't know how to use it, but he had the biggest... I don't know what he was thinking about, but the biggest thing... And I, I talked to him. I was like... I was like, hey man, what are you doing at the sex party? And he said, bitches, just said bitches, just, just no cop, just bitches. And uh, I'll tell you this, didn't get any bitches, but he, he was there strong in the hot tub. 
Uh, and that night, it ended up just being me and him in the hot tub. Um, we're both naked, just talking, mostly about trains. It was a pretty good conversation, mostly about trains and stuff. And a lady did pop in. A lady popped into the hot tub. And I'm thinking, I, I got this. <laughs> The competition's slim. I'm, not, I'm being pretty weird. The competition's pretty slim. I'm thinking, I got this. No, went straight to him, and I got offended. I'm not going to lie. I know that's, that's rude to say, but I feel like, I, I don't know, I had, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I had that at that moment. You, know, you never, you're, you, it's like you're confident as a man until you see a down such a guy in a hot tub with a bigger dick than you take the only girl in the room, and you're like, oh, what am I? You know what I'm saying? What am I really worth in this world? Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I know. I'm going to work that out later. It's good. Does that sound crazy? Is that too mean? No. A little bit. Yeah, I don't like you said, uh, that sounded like it might be very mean. Um, let's see a uh, hair. I, um, I, I recently interviewed for a job. That was fucking stupid. I hate, no, don't, no, I hate interviewing. It's so dumb. I hate interview questions. I hate inter I hate the interview questions because they, they want you to not be confident. I think you should only be confident in interview. I think you should be so confident you're a problem to the workplace. That's how confident you should be. Like when they go up to you and say like, what are your biggest flaws? I'm like, yo, making you money and also fucking your wife. That's what you should say, you know? That's not funny. <laughs> I know that's not funny. That's why I said it's not funny. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a joke for this uh, little, little runaway here. Uh, <laughs> How are you doing, miss? Are you doing good? Thank you for that lot. She's dead? Yeah, you. Yeah. What what train did you get on here? <laughs> where, are you, where are you from? Brooklyn. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's my time, everybody. Thanks. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Give it up Give it up for Miles Toe, everybody, and that eyewitness report from the sex parties of Brooklyn. Uh, well, I am learning so much tonight. I have learned so much from you guys. Thank you for these TED Talks. I think, you know, I'm going to say something very politically correct, because I don't give a fuck, okay? I'm canceled. I self-canceled. I self-fucking-canceled, okay? I, I, I think it's, there's a kernel of truth. I think... Some, sometimes people with Down syndrome do have big dicks. I think it's true. I think it's got, the Lord closes a door and he opens a window. You see? I don't know. I hope to God they have big dicks. I don't know. I think it's true. I think it's true. Give it up one more time for Miles Toe. That was fucking hilarious. Informant. All right. We have Joe Levy on deck closing us out. Give it all. Oh my God. I can't wait. This guy. Just naturally funny and 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 insightful. I I see Joe Rogan podcast. I see Danny Fallon and Joe Rogan interviewing you for like three hours and be like, well, what are you think about? Give it up for Danny Fallon, everybody. Yeah, good to be here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Good job, guys. Way to be in the back talking and playing videos really loud and making everyone fucking leave. <laughs> You fucking narcissistic pieces of shit, all of you. That was us. Yes, it was. <laughs> I was there. I was part of it. But then I changed. <laughs> I reformed. I joined the...